Well, hello everyone. Uh, we are going to do another stream. Let me change the presentation. Okay, now you can see me. Uh, we are going to do another stream of coding with Rust. Uh, this time we are going to try to tackle day nine in the advent of code. I'm going to give the read in a in a second. And we have also Olhi. Hello, Olhi. Hey there. Happy to be here again. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know where to start right now. I've been, as usual, spending... I have already read a bit of the description and uh, I am getting increasingly, increasingly irritated by them. Gotta say. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know exactly where to start, but I think that we have the day 9 here in my folder. And the first thing that I should do is copy that uh, into day 10, 12, and so on, so I don't forget later on. Um, Maybe you can all, after the stream, uh, probably make a macro that already copies up to 25. Which is mean, reasonable to me. Macro? Why do you need a macro when you can just... Or like that. That's, that looks good too. I mean... Can I spend five minutes writing the macro, or I can I spend twenty seconds just typing it? Um, yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That looks good. Uh, cargo tunnel will need. This worries me less. Actually, it will be easier if I just copy from the 10 because it's just changing one number. I think I will do only here on to, until day 19 and we can continue because this one I definitely, if I forget, doesn't matter. Oh no, it's, did you just clear Rust Analyzer? Uh, I don't need to. Yes, I see that, that it's failing in... Uh, but it's because I'm changing this and it's getting crazy. Because it doesn't make sense. I have the same binary two times. That reminds me. I should probably take a look at my end over here to see if I can get Rust Analyzer somehow to work. Because uh, last time it didn't. Rust Analyzer... Server is stopped. Click to start. Doing so, I am clicking, but it refuses to start. Okay, guess I'll just code with a handicap. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so we created all of that. So now. Uh... But actually, we can't be the only one experiencing this issue, right? Live share Rust analyzer. VS Code Live Share has partial support for Rust Analyzer. Partial. The host's Rust Analyzer instance will be shared with all guests joining the session. The guests do not have to have the Rust Analyzer extension installed for this to work. Well, look at that. I didn't even need to set up the whole virtual machine. Huh. Okay. If uh, you are joining a live share session and do have Rust Analyzer installed locally. Which I do. Comments from the comment palette will not wait. And do have yeah comments from the co will not correctly since they will attempt to communicate with the local server live session and do have wait is is it saying that i should not have it installed the rust analyzer i think it doesn't matter ah 
Okay, okay, and now I get the issue because you have disabled all of the... But, but wait, C can you make a mutable variable? Uh, here, let me mute arcs. Yes, it should be underlined. It's not on my end. Or is it? Ah, uh, there's a fucking warning. So you see my warning. At least you see my warning. Yes. Ah, yes, hey. yes, the warnings I did see. Hello, Tommy Luco, in the chat. Good Welcome morning, nice. I guess. Yes, good morning. Good evening, Tommy Luco. Welcome. Ah, it's morning. It's morning. For Tommy Luco, I think as well, it's morning. If I recall correctly, he's also in Ireland. Anyway, some someday we'll need to figure this out. I don't know if I need to do something, but uh, I don't have any options. Shared servers? No, that's a TCP port. Uh, no. Yeah. It, oh, it oh yes. Twelve thirteen is still morning. You are, you are right. You, you know what happens? Uh, I start. We we plan to start this stream at eleven a.m. And uh, this is what happens. The technical difficulties of the last time it bites us uh, again, less but again, and yeah, it's, al it's already afternoon. I mean, it's Saturday, so it technically it is still morning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if, if you party Friday until four o'clock, then morning goes until four p.m. the next day. Yes, that, that's that's how it goes. That's how it goes. I I remember that. Still a lot of years since I went partying so hard, but I still remember. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, so I think I think we are good. Okay, uh, we cannot fix that uh, in this session now. Um, so yeah, it's not I, a big issue. The fact that warnings work is already good. By the way, like living in Ireland, I always feel guilty of not using Zorin. But then again, I just don't like it. I don't know what is Zorin. Zorin? I mean, I'm a Spanish, uh, so I, I, I don't have that much knowledge. Zorin OS. Oh. Uh, are you mentioning because it's Irish? Zorin, is that the Linux that wants to be really close to Windows? Project was started uh, by 2008. Company is based in Dublin, Ireland. Ah, uh, this is Linux. It's a Linux distribution based on, on Ubuntu. Yeah, he uh, Tommy Luca just told us in, in the chat. Zorin OS is a distro from a guy li living in Dublin. Oh, huh. nice, nice. Um, yeah, heavily customized to help users transition from Windows and, Mac and MacOS easily. Okay, I mean, there have been a, a, a ton, a ton of those uh, distros. They are doing a lot in regards to make it easy for former Windows users. Yeah, that's what I'm reading on Wikipedia. Oh uh, yeah, yes, there have been a lot of those. Okay. Anyway, anyway, uh, so let's just start, okay, let's just start. Uh, so day nine, we have the rope bridge. This rope bridge creaks as you walk along it. You're unsure how old it is or whether it can support your weight. It seems to support the elves just fine though. The bridge spans a gorg which was carved out of the massive river far below you, gorg? or gourds, I don't know how that's called, uh, but I never heard that word. Ah, okay, some sort of a kind of a canyon, I would say, ah, with a river below. Ah, still learning English as for today. Wow. Um, you step carefully, as you do, the ropes stretch and twist. You decide to distract yourself by modeling the rope physics, <laughs> typical engineer. Maybe you can even figure out where not to step. You consider a rope with a knot at its end. These notes mark the head and the tail of the rope. Wow, wait. Consider the rope with a knot 
it, it, it's an, this not mark okay it, oh okay more or less more or less if the head moves far enough away from the tail the tail is pulled toward, uh, toward the head y yes okay that's okay that's how a string works um yeah uh, it's different than lots of other dishes. Oh, yeah <laughs> it's off topic again okay yes uh let's move on the two nebulous reasoning involving plank, plank lengths. Okay, I don't know if you all know about plank lengths. Uh, this is basically a, a tangent into physics. Plank lengths is about... Um, Isn't that like the smallest length unit possible? Yes, this is quantum physics. This is the minimum amount of length possible in quantum physics. Um, yeah, Planck measures, Planck length, Planck energy, Planck time, and so on. So basically, he is basically is put. It's going off topic. It's going off topic. You should be able to model the positions of the nuts in a two-dimensional grid. Then, by following a hypothetical series of motions, you put puzzle input for the head. You can determine how the tail will move. To to the aforementioned. Plank lengths, the rope must be quite short. In fact, the head and the tail must always be touching. Diagonally adjacent and the then overlapping both count as touching. Okay. So we have here. So the dodge, I guess, this represents the field of the game, the board game that we are playing now. T for Ted, for tail, H for head, okay, and then we have three different positions, yeah. If the head is ever two steps directly up, down, left or right from the tail, the tail must also move, move one step in that direction so it remains close enough. Yes. Otherwise, if the head and tail aren't touching and aren't on the same row or column, the tail always move one step diagonally to keep up. Okay, 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 okay. So that, that, that means that when we are modeling the string, the, the tail and head, we need to first attempt a four directional move if, we, if it is in one of the or cardinal directions, and if not, we use the eight uh, the diagonals. Yeah, uh, you just need to work out where the tail goes as the tail as the head follows a series of motions. Assume the head and the tail both start at the same position, overlapping. For example, right four, up up four, left three, down one, right four. Down one, left five, right two. Okay, the series of motions moves the head, so we move the head. Right four steps, then up four steps. Yes. After each step, you will need to update the position of the tail if the step means that the head is no longer adjacent to the tail. Visually, those motions occur as follows. Okay. H covers T, comma, S. What is S? S marks the started position as a reference point. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Moves to the right and the, the tail follows. Then it goes up. Okay. So mo moves up. But it didn't move because it's not the same row. And then after the second move, the tail did a diagonal move. Okay. Okay, I understand. I think I do understand. After smoothing the rope, you can count up all of the positions of the tail visited at least once so okay in this diagram s against my starting position with the tail also visited and the uh hashtag or what that's called uh, doesn't matter minus other positions that i'll visit yeah um 
so there are 13 positions that they'll visit at least once. Simulate your complete hypothetical series of motions. How many positions does the tail of the rope visit at least once? Ah, and then we can get the puzzle input. And they see a lot. Um, let's copy this inside so you can see my puzzle input. In input TXT. Um, oh, the puzzle is input there for my user. Please log in to get your puzzle input. It has forgotten me, it seems. No, I'm still here. I'm still here. No, but no, I mean, no. look for it in the in Visual Studio. Hey, uh, okay, just, no. I'm just copying it there. Uh, input.txt. Mm -hmm. um. Wait, that's the sample input. Yeah, and input. No, input txt has 2000 rows. Day 9. So. Yeah, yeah, that's the right file. The one that you're looking is the right file. It has 2000. Yeah. So, wait, 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 wait. Um. Okay, I'm logged in again. Can I get my puzzle input? Yes. Yeah, your puzzle input could be different than mine. It is different, yes. Like it always is. Mm. And where's the example input? Ah, yeah, there. I'm confused what all these others uh, symbolize. Sorry? L5. L5, move to the left five times. <laughs> there are 13 positions the tail visited at least once. Um... Um, I could I could pull up a, again a spreadsheet and try to work the problem over there to get better understanding. I would appreciate that. I would appreciate that. I still I think I'm getting closer, but yeah, spreadsheet mm. would be nice. Okay, I'm going. I'll copy the link to your private chat. So, not to the one in the virtual machine, the in element. Yes. Uh, and uh, then I'm going to. I'm going to rename the sheets so we can reuse them over the time. And now, new sheet here, that will be advent of code 9.1, for day 9, uh, part 1. Uh, and you are here, uh, be sure to, to go to the third page. Uh, the... I'm here. Ah, okay. Okay, so... Let's make this... Smaller. Okay, something like that. Okay. Um, so, what they're describing is the following. Um, what a weird description of a problem to, to give something completely different. Um, so, we are kind of playing the, the snake game. Okay. Uh, so, it has a, a tail and uh head okay um 
So let's paint that. I don't know. Um, Tail and that? head. Okay. Okay. So if that is a string or a snake, okay, uh, then when you move the head down, okay. It's saying that diagonals are fine. Diagonals are in the same direction. Okay, so that is stays. That is, that is still connected. If you move it down again, then this one is not connected, so it needs to go here. Sorry, following the pro the problem goes here in diagonal, and then that will do something like this. Okay, so it's kind of a snake. It's, so it's a string. More or less, you follow the, the idea, so... Um, More or less, I do. Can okay. you use the Vivi Snake game as a basis for this? No, because it's, 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 not, it's not a snake. Um, the thing is that this length, following the problem, this is incorrect. What I'm explaining to you is basically for visual purposes. Because, in, in fact, you only have head, uh, tail and head. So, the, the middle sections, they don't exist. They don't exist. Uh, 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 uh. And then it's just tail and head, nothing else. So in this configuration, if the head moves down, the tail moves here. And now uh, the head moves down, the tail needs to move here. If the head moves right, the tail doesn't move because it's still at one square distance, okay? Diagonals are still considered distance one. Diagonals are still, con wait. Ah, so the tail doesn't follow when the head moves diagonal? The head cannot move, so the, the head can only move in four directions. The head can only move, so the only available options for the head are uh, left, up, down, and right. Okay, from the start, you only have four directions for the head to move. But if I, if I move it down, okay, the tail will move down with the head. But if I move it right, the tail is still within one square distance. So it doesn't need to move. That makes sense. Okay. If I move it, for example, up, it also doesn't move the tail. Okay. But if I move it right, okay, the tail needs to follow. Okay. Following the problem, it says that if the tail and the head, they are in the same row, or in the same column, then the tail will move left, right, up, or down. But because it's not, then it says that it, it must move diagonally. Then diagonal, it will be that. Then the tail moves diagonal. The head doesn't move diagonally because the instructions only have four coordinate system, only have four possibilities. The other thing is that the head can move backwards into the tail and can overlap the tail. So if I move the head left, it will overlap the tail, and you, then you will have head and tail on the same place. Then if I move the head left again, you will get something like that. It will go over and, and cross to the left, the tail will not move, and it's square, and it will be still there. following so far? Kinda, kinda. Uh, th th those problems are getting more and more complicated. Yeah, I, uh, I, I feel I am reaching my limit, even as uh, um, th that is actually the problem, you know, uh, if you can understand the problem, most likely you can code it. The, the problem, the limitation is not how much you, you, you can code. The, the typical limitation is how much can you understand. 
That is, that is yeah. the actual difficulty. I can also sense my motivation decreasing, unfortunately. Um, like, I think I already know um, that... I, I don't know how far you uh, are going to take this, but I think I already know that I won't... Um, I won't be there until the end. I will drop out a lot sooner. That's fine. That's fine. I don't know. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, I mean... You can leave to me the, the details to remind you the, what is the actual details and, and to be sure that everything is working properly. But you understand that the tail needs to follow the head. There are some rules to do that that yes. are explaining the problem. Okay. Um... Here, here is one of the big problems here that we have. How big is the uh, board? That the area where we can play with. Like, how many cells by how many cells can, can we place? Can the board throw, grow dynamically? Yes, but I'm asking per the problem. It doesn't have a definite one. That's what I'm looking for. Like, the, the problem... Uh, it's not limited to any particular size. So, it could grow dynamically, or we have, can have other tricks. I have something that my, my, you might like. Okay. okay. What well, is the something? The something is, instead of recording um, actual vectors for the grid that could grow dynamically, because the problem with a vector that grows dynamically is that they could tell us, like, go to the right 1,000 times, and now go to go down 1,000 times. And uh, you will need to put a uh, 1,000 by 1,000 grid for just, like, 1 million, 1 million cells in memory, just for uh, 2,000 items. That so have you're been saying visited. it's inefficient? Not that it's inefficient, is that uh, we can get... Uh, out of memory. Uh, there is a risk of getting out of memory. And then the other problem is going the, on the negative side. So if we position the, the starting point in the zero, zero, and they go up, uh, they will go negative, and there are no negative indexes. Uh, if we could put them into the, I don't know, 5,000 by 5,000, 10,000 by 10,000, but then if they go up or left by 10,000, they can go on to the negatives and screw our code. That could be worked out by trial, trial and error, because, I mean, the, the, the problem input is one, and uh, you can tweak it until it works. But I, I, prefer, I prefer generic solutions. So my generic solution is, instead of storing this in a, in a vector, in a matrix of, of points, uh, or a table of rows and columns, what if we store this in a hash map where uh, the key is uh, x comma y instead of row column because I prefer on x y coordinates it seems easier for me. I mean it doesn't matter we just need to agree if we want row comma column or we want x comma y because row column is y comma x um, so we need to agree on that. But in that case it won't draw the actual entire board but only the steps that have been taken actually i don't plan to even draw the entire board maybe for the bugging we need to, to try to draw it but then that means some kind of conversion into vector even if it, if it is not not in memory but via a loop uh i'm printing that if it gets very big um we will not be able to see much in the console or the real input so Maybe we can print it for the sample input, but for the real input, uh, it's going to be unwelding. It's going to be very bad. So uh, I'm, I'm not really counting. I'm, I'm assuming that I can do this good enough to basically uh, ace it at, at the first time without having to debug it that much. Without That's very, cool. That's very, encouraging. Very minor debugging. I hope I don't have to print it because printing it is going to be might be even more difficult than um, actually doing it. 
I'm doing a hash map has the advantage that um, it can do negatives as much as it wants. It can do um, go to the side as much as, as it wants, and then uh, the um, the limit, the actual memory limit, is the amount of visited cells, which is 2,000. Well, more than 2,000 because uh, each movement has several. Uh, I see that some have 18 and so on, but I mean. Even uh, let's say times 20, this is 40,000. 40,000 items in a hash map is not that much. But if we do uh, 40,000 times 40,000 vector, it's quite a bit. Uh, so that's my plan. That is my plan. To put that into a hash map and uh, store heads and head and tail. Uh, just in uh, regular uh, objects like regular integers so don't dest don't store that as characters into the into the matrix and just store the um, yeah just just store the the visited ones that is my plan that is my plan i don't know should we start maybe Yeah, I, I I will observe what you do. Okay. So let's begin with content and darks and commented um mm, 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 mm. and basically uh the bug contents uh, to see where we are, uh, cargo run, binary, day, uh, nine, part one, sample input. Uh, sorry, that needs a double dash. I'm in the wrong folder. Okay, and we add the bug, and now we see the input file. Okay, so... First part is parsing this. Um, do you want to do that, or I mean, uh, you should be able I, to parse that. Um, I need a better idea first of what to parse that into. Um, so I would like, I would like um, uh, abstract. movements uh, with a uh, uh, be a bag of something um, yeah I know and then extract move of a direction uh, dir, uh, which is an enum and then uh, amount, which is um, U32, I guess. Uh, then this extract move is the one that goes here. Uh, those are the directions. And um, that is your data. This is one option. This is one option. I, I do have another one. You, you, you are looking what I'm writing, right? Yes. Okay. Another option is to just do a struct, a struct movement, uh, let's call it movement 2, that is basically a vector of dir. And then when you find the 4, you just put 4 of the same one after the other. This is actually better because, I mean, it's less types and um, we don't really care uh, if it is a movement right 4 times. We only care that it's like right, 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 right. Okay. Um, so it's right, right, right. Yeah. So it's so when you see R four, if you can write write four times into the vector instead of writing a move of direction right amount four, that uh, saves saves one step one step for later. I follow that. Um, 
my, my intuition would tell me to actually prefer a vector of deer and uh, u32 um because i feel that additional data may be useful for part two and it's in, in practice it's not that much difference okay okay uh okay um yeah let's, let's do that go for it Enum Deer. I agree that Enum Deer is useful. Um, Enum Deer. So, up, down, left, right. But wait, we can make a special Rust Enum here, right? No, 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 please no, please no, please no, please no. Please no, no? okay, please why no. not? Uh, because the the data that goes with it is always the same. And if you put it inside, it means that every single time to access the amount, we need to know the type to get into the amount. So, um, and that's bad practice? It will make the code more complex. Okay, so don't do that when the type is always the same. Got it. So, or in, in, the, in the other direction, do that only if that makes things better. So, if there is marginal difference, uh, prefer the struct because it's easier to use. So, en enums, enums with fields are a bit harder to use. They, they give you more trouble. Um, um, I would actually do it without the move struct and just do beer u32. Okay, okay. Uh, you need the parenthesis for the tuple, but yeah, okay. Uh, let's remove the move. Um, I don't care that much. Still a warning? Wait. Yeah, parenthesis. I it thought is, I already it, added them. Ah, okay. This is a tuple. Okay, so to make things clean, let's create a function parse input. Contents string. Okay. And that returns movements, as we said. And let. Um, moves uh, equal movements. I'm going to create one by default. Uh, v is basically an, an empty vector. I guess that you will need a mutable. You change that later. But th then this returns moves. Okay. Uh, okay, and then you add the code here. Um, Do we want the first one to be a filler? The first one to be a filler? What means the first one to be a filler? Uh, to have zero, not store any any data, but to start from one, from index one. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, meanwhile, I will call the function. So while you work on the top, let's input contents. Just stop following you for a second. I work on the top. Um, um, Do you have experience with live share in other contexts? No, it's the first time that I actually use it, the live share. I'm very skeptical about uh, whether this doing things at the same time can work out. And yeah, I yeah. think I prefer to wait until you are done with your part. I'm, I'm mostly done. Try... Ah, yes, forgot the debug again. Stupid. Okay. Yes, I'm done. Now? Yes, yes, I'm done, I'm done. Okay. I finished. 
Um, but yeah, um, the, the point of this extension is to be able to write onto the same file both at the same time. If it cannot handle that, it's very bad, okay? <clears throat> it, has to, it has to be able to do that. The same workspace folder, that I could understand, because then we don't interfere, but if I paste 50 lines into a program and you have simultaneously done written something into live 50 that is now a different line, I don't know, I imagine that is pretty hard to do. It is hard, but that's why the it's not the, an open source thing. Uh, I mean, Google Docs does this, does, does this thing. We can have uh, a thousand people editing the same the same file, and uh, the uh, there were open source tools to do this live share thing with a special program, um, and I used it like ten years in the past, <clears throat> and it allows to to write at the same time. So it should do. It should do. Seriously, don't 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 worry about that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, print LN on pens. Oh, doesn't like it? Uh, no, no, missing a T. Contents. The last T was missing. He doesn't like it. It works, it works. It works. Um, I'm seeing it in the console output right now. Yes, let me just do this to confirm. Um, oops, sorry. We we collided a bit. The uh, back, yes. Okay. We collided. Yeah, I mean, um, your your key was sent, and I, I sent the same key. So we b both press up, so it was sent up two times. That's it. I see. Working as intended. The, the, the console is not the best tool to to <laughs> use at the same time. Okay, but this does exactly what it wa uh, what I wanted to. Uh... Okay, uh, so for I gotta split, I gotta split by new line, and I gotta look up how to do that again. For that, I will open my local VS Code. Yeah, dot dot lines, the the split by lines automatically. There is dot split, okay. which you can pass the, the the new line character, but dot lines does that for you already, and it's more that expensive. Is amazing. That is amazing. So for line in moves dot line lines, yeah, plural, uh, exactly. Why is red? No method name uh, line. For it's because that is content. Sorry. Ah, my bad. That, that was my bad. Um okay for line in contents dot lines. Um and now we need a split. Wait, no, no. Uh, yes, yes, we do need a split. We do need a split because uh in this actual input there are there are more than two digits. So one thing you can do, one thing you can do is in here because you want to split like for each line, you want it split by space, okay? Yes. Which is basically uh, something like line dot split uh, sp space, okay? I don't know if that or or is like that. Uh, it doesn't like maybe the return value. Yes, and and then that's single quote, okay? And then you can take that and so on. Um, you can do this in a in a map dot map trying to but what is line dot split now is it a string or a tuple of strings it's a um, it's a vector uh, sorry it's an iterator it is an iterator it's an iterator that iterates that we can convert into a so you can do collect on this 
and you can do let x, uh, x or whatever and this is a vector of string um, that's what it returns so you can also do map this uh, let's call it l for line l dot split by space okay mm -hmm. and uh, collect into a vec And if I'm not mistaken... But can they both be outside? Out of the scope? It, Wouldn't it separate the loops by uh, direction and amount then? No, no, because uh, this is created by, by line and then for each line, so it creates something like a vector inside a vector. It, it is the same. It is the same. Ah, yes, I think I follow now. Because line in this instance is the vector that contains two strings. Yeah, uh, exactly. And now you can do uh, let uh, letter is line zero and let number u32 is line one but then you remember that you have here the, the error you remember how to solve that because the right side is a line string one mismatched yeah the right side is a string the left side is a number line yes well okay hold on hold on hold on i'm Uh, ars. If I remember correctly, U32. Mm, no, just dot, dot and wrap. Parse returns an option. Okay. Okay, okay that's good. Okay. okay, and the rest I think I already know. Um moves dot push open bracket open bracket um first we have but wait 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 I gotta process Let dear equal match. Match letter. Okay, now I have to look up the match syntax. Match. Do I have match? Okay, open bracket. Close bracket. Um... R arrow and I guess I have to do dear right yes oh uh, okay yeah <laughs> yes we could use uh, use use dear Dear column column star. Dear column uh, column star uh, uh, asterisk and semicolon. Uh, star I think is a synonym for the asterisk. Semicolon. Okay. okay. Good. 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 Um. Okay. I I want to interject to do something a bit uh, more organized. Okay. This in here, this is uh, something particular of the directions. Directions, you can uh, transform them from letters. Right? 
Mm -hmm. You can compare letter, letter to direction. So I would prefer to have an implement dir and and right here um, good call uh, from str okay which accepts uh, um, letter um, str and returns self well self or dir whatever you want I'm just used to put always self and uh, then uh, you put this in here okay and then this use dir can be put also inside so it doesn't pollute the, re the remaining well uh, no let's let's put, the, put yeah let's put it because because pro probably for the rest of the code we will need it as well um and then uh, here the letter can be directly a uh, dir if you do uh, dir colon colon from str and do that okay and now you can continue in here. Nice. Then just copy and paste, I guess. Suck, suck. Um, R up, down, left. Can auto formatter do the thing? No, I guess it can't. Uh, because there is a code error yet, so you need to continue writing that. Uh, left, I guess there needs to be a default case also, which will need to panic. It's panic exclamation. Exactly. Uh, first goes. Exactly. Um, yeah. Put a reason, please. Uh, reason? Yeah, reason for panic. Like, don't panic, and that's it. Panic with something. Direction cannot be interpreted. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, try it. In the, in the, uh, you still need a push. Yeah, still need a push. Yes, we need two for that. Yes. Oh, doesn't like it. Semicolon. Um, and now mutable here. Uh, now I don't know what is the problem. Oh, okay. yes. It's no, 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 no. It's that it's not dot push. It's not a vector. It's a struct. So it's mo moves dot v. Moves dot v. Hold on. Hold because on. movement is a struct that has uh, an item, an item v. Ah, I see. But wait, why, why a struct then? Wouldn't an alias be better in this case? Could be. I mean, there are other ways. Um, I don't care that much. I don't care that much. No, but I, I prefer having the struct because I can implement the struct. Oh, and you cannot implement aliases? No. The alias is the alias. I see. I see. I see. I see. So I, see, I, I, I see. prefer creating a new type I and mean, it's just one thing. Um, there is a trick in Rust which is called the defer trite, which can make this V work as it was a, the, the whole thing as a, as a vector. So you don't need to do the dot V all the time. But I don't want to complicate things. This is not something that I. It, it doesn't matter because the deferred right has its own problems. Okay. Okay, uh, try it in the shell. I do so. Wait, wait, wait. Of course, I want to have a confirmation. Uh, part one, we do the parse input contents and then. Wait, debug moves, debug moves. You already do that. Yes, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I'm gonna scroll up. Yeah, that looks good. Looks good. Okay. Now, the main problem is that we need to iterate that. 
we need that into a loop that keeps spitting right, 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 up, 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 left, 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 down, and so on, by the number of times. Yes, so my guess is now to make a path vector that only contains the directions. So here in movements, you, you could implement here movements and do, uh, to function to flat vec uh, as flat vector. Uh, we read only and we output a vector of uh, of dir and uh, yeah. Uh, and that is needed. Excel. Ah, uh, wait. Ampersand self. Um. Ah, okay. Okay. So, uh, four. Four. Move in no for that direction in Okay, wait a second, wait a second. So two, two things, two things. So for now I want to keep the to do. Uh, because I don't want the code to blame you on the fact that you're not returning yet, okay? This is part one. Okay. Uh, part two is that the, on the ampersand self, ampersand is not needed here. That is automatic. Something that okay. you in in uh, in C++ will have to take care about, but here is taken, taken care for you. The other thing is that self is not a vector. You cannot iterate self. It's self.v. Okay? And then the next thing is that uh, self.v, when you iterate that, let's put dot iter, so it's clear what we are doing. Um, uh, iter is the one that is read only. Yes, yes, because it will, it will do, so if you don't want to put iter, I think it's ampersand self v, but let's put, I prefer putting iter, it's, it's, mo it's more clear. Um, then this doesn't speed the direction, it speeds a direction and a quantity, a number, okay? Um, By the way, did your face can disappear? Yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot to re-enable it. Uh, now it is there. It will take a few seconds. Uh, okay, so you have two things. You have dir and uh, size. So you can put it here. So here is the thing. If you put here like uh, move, okay? Uh, or move, okay. Uh, you will have um, you will get something like uh, dir as mov.0 and uh, uh, len is mov.1 okay for the two coordinates if you do it like that but you can tell Rust to do that for you by putting here parentheses and put dir comma len and because th those are tuples so this is the key with tuples with tuples you can do this with arrays and vectors you cannot and this automatically unpacks the tuple into two, into two variables that they are already available for you. Good. Um. Dear. Dear. Okay, so for. Um, underscore in zero dot dot len push. Wait, no. Yes. Ah, we need to initialize the vector here. So let mod. Vector equal vec Hold on In len, it doesn't like that Expected integer found borrowed, okay 
e-referencing. So I need to do this. It probably wants the, in the inner type. It probably needs the, the, the inner type. That, that is the problem. When you put equals vec, uh, that vec could be of any type. Yeah. But I mean, if I don't do that, then it should recognize it down here when I do the first push, right? Uh, or when you do the return. So if we put here, instead of to do below, we put just return vector, it should recognize already. Because right. that, that needs to match the return type. What dot push? Uh, dear. Okay. Uh, now we have a problem. Expected struct std dir. Ah, uh, do I need to dereference this, that one too? Yeah. Okay. By the way, this dereference on len and dir, those two, they uh, do work because those types are copy. The enum, I made it copy. If it was, if something is not copy, you will need to do dot clone. So in this case, they are copy. You can just do star, and we'll do a copy. Oh, great. Okay. The reference. Ah, uh, yeah. So, but the copying happens automatically. Yeah, it happens on the star. When you put the, the, the asterisk, is doing the dereference, doing the copy on, on that star. It's, it's okay. making the copy of the value. Uh, that's because and, you are and creating... Like, the, the difference is always clone is manually requesting a copy, while copy is um, yeah, more or less, happening yes. automatically. Yes, copy is uh, what we say implicit, and clone is ex explicit. You have to specifically say it. And clone can trigger other, uh, custom stuff. You can customize how clone works. You can make your type clone differently as just copying the internal data. Usually clone, when you derive clone, it copies, it copies everything, but you can customize how it clones. So a particular type might clone differently. This syntax here, is it correct? Yes, that's correct. So I don't need to put an equal sign here? No, 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 because that's okay. from zero to len, which means that it excludes len in itself. But it includes zero. But it includes zero. With overall, it will count len times. If you put an oh, equals, wait. yeah. If, if, could, if, could I do an one here and an equal? Would that be the same result? It's the same result, yes. In coding, we prefer the other because we are used to the other, uh, but it's exactly the same, yes. I see. Yeah. And uh, the borrowing here in len and dir happens because we have an iter that will borrow from v. So dir and len will be borrowed. And the main reason is because we are creating a new vector while only reading the original one. So you need to create new data. So you need to copy the data into the new vector. So it's not possible to uh, do this without copying. Unless, unless you are okay with destroying the original vector. If you want to destroy the original vector, and this is just for explaining purposes, we can call it into. Into usually means destroy the original. Mm -hmm. And then we call this just self. Okay. And now this can be into iter. Again, into means destroy the original. And now this doesn't need to be uh, uh, borrowed. And then there, there is no data copied because basically the data is being moved from the old vector to the new vector. I see. Okay. Um, yeah, this is something that you can only uh, do this kind of stuff in, in Rust. In other languages, it will be the same. It doesn't make sense in other languages to do that. But in here, you can you can do uh, into and basically destroy the original to avoid having data duplication. So, yeah. I mean, th there are more ways. There are more ways. But, yeah. You want to use it? Hmm? We, do we want to use it, I guess, no? 
I guess we can leave both, cause why not? Yeah. Uh, so this is one bit code. Um, For now, I'm gonna underscore the into. Uh, I'm going to add bi um, no, clippy. Uh, did I copy? Now I copied. Yes. Um, going to allow bit code because I don't want that that warning so then we don't need the, then the score anymore it, okay. it, will, it will not warn uh, us on that okay so I think I'm going to use the into variant because the original for at least part one we don't care and because we have different functions I can just go um, here uh, moves and land and then let moves is moves and land dot into flat vec and now we can debug just moves and if I execute that yeah that looks that looks about about right yes yes cool Cool. Uh, I think I'm going to use the print, the print line version uh, because. Can we take a 10 minute break? Yes, of course. Cool. Then I'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah, that looks better. Don't you cry
Anyway, I am back. If anyone is in the chat and wants to talk about anything, we still have five minutes until all he's back. So yeah. Let me bring that back. It's the problem statement. I can commit that meanwhile. A nine input passing commit. Ah. Yo, I'm back. Ah, I'm back too. I'm here. I ate um, a small date spa. A small what? Date spa. Uh, it's it's like uh, a piece of candy, but it doesn't use normal sugar, but dates instead of sugar. No? You know dates, the, the fruit? Ah, uh, yes, I think I think uh, I know what you mean, yeah. You think that it's small and black? Or kind of... Yes, yes. Color? Yeah. Okay. Um, what yeah. did I miss? N nothing. I just sit here and I was waiting for you. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah. So, well, uh, the thing that you missed is I, I went to Lucia to ask and see how she was, and she was preparing lunch uh, a bit. And probably in 30 minutes or 40 minutes, we'll have a 30 minute break. At least from my side, I mean, if you are up to continuing. You can continue without me for those 30 minutes, up to you. Let's see, let's see. But yeah. So, um, now is when it gets a bit complicated, right? What to do with yeah. this? Okay. So, uh, so you follow me for a second. Um, Following? Yeah, so we need... Uh, we need... Um, a uh, board uh, where we can uh, can store uh, visited cells. So that can be uh, hash map of uh, x comma y positions. At which cell do we start? Um, so first of all. First of all, it doesn't matter. Uh, it can be uh, zero, 00 for simplicity. Like, it really doesn't matter for the problem. Nice. But 00, zero will be my, my bet. Um, then. Uh, Shouldn't we then make it a uh, signed integer just to make sure? Yes. Mm. Yes, I was counting on that. I was counting on a sign in this area. Then um, next thing, Kevin uh, Tail will be basically objects with uh, X Y posi uh, current position. Um, I don't think we need more data to work with. Hey, hello, uh, Sukan Tian. Uh, what distro are you using? Uh, this is Debian uh, Linux uh, using a mix of testing, uh, unstable and st unstable. So, you know, like 
Debian using Linux, uh, using testing primarily, plus stable, plus Siva. Let's call that some stable. Not the best thing if you want to manage, so if you don't have a lot of video managing yourself the system, but because I like it a lot. Um, okay with the system sometimes breaking on updates and then I'll fix it myself. Because um, it, it allows me a lot of flexibility on what I can put into the system. And I don't like particularly how Ubuntu or other distros they have too many layers of stuff that I don't want. So having it a bit crude, it makes my life easier. So you think Linux user everywhere while using Debian and VS, VS Code? Oh, well, okay. Whatever. <laughs> I don't get it. Anyway, moving on. Uh, let's see. Uh, so that's all, all we need. So position, position might be a struct so we can define that as a type to work with um, let's call it post for purposes of being shorter um, that we could derive here debug copy and clone because in theory this can be copied just fine and this basically has an x i32 y i32 um uh, that should be plenty and uh, i should not be worried about that um again that could be a tuple yes but i prefer having a specific types I, I i like giving it names the types so that's why i don't work with tuples that much uh on return values and things that i need to store because then i know the, the, the name of the type uh much more clearly for me that's my particular taste um, Makes sense. Then, in the same way, I'm going to do uh, board, um, which cannot implement copy, because it's a hash map. Um, Ooh, cannot implement copy. No, because hash map, same as vector, is a dynamic uh, length uh, structure, the, the type, uh, that cannot be implementing copy automatically, because it it what happens if we try? Uh, it will tell you not to do that. Um, so let's call it data. Uh, hash map of, of what? Okay. Let's call it visited. And then it's a hash set. Uh, hash set of posts. Okay. So that should work. That okay. That does work. Okay. Uh, it yeah. I want to remove the hash map on top because we are not using hash map. We are using hash set only. Okay. Now if I put copy, it will tell me here. It says the thread copy might not be implemented for this type. This field doesn't implement copy. The field visited doesn't implement copy because hash set doesn't implement copy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the actual reason is because the the structure inside the hash set contains pointers to stuff, and uh, if you copy the pointers from one region of memory to another, it needs a special treatment because the destination of the copy, those pointers need to be adapted. You need to change the memory addresses of those pointers to be valid. If not, you will have two variables point uh, with internal stuff pointing to the same thing and it will be a chaos and you will get double freeze and so on. This is something that it could happen in C++. In C++ if you have a vector or a hash set or something like that and you copy it like by memory, you just do a, a memory copy, uh, the resulting structure uh, while it seems to work, as you use both at the same time, uh, something breaks and then suddenly you get a memory error. So that's what here Rust is preventing us from, from doing. Um, yeah. 
So, same, no? the board is very simplistic, that could be directly, but like I like having the type. Um, then we have a head and tail that those don't need to be structures because uh, they will be just variables. Uh, yeah, this will be just variables. So, for example, here in board, something that we will do is something like uh, visited count. Uh, so, number of cells that we visited. Okay, that, that is pretty straightforward. That returns a use size. And that's basically self.visited.len. Uh, so, because this is one of the properties of the hash, of the hash set or hash map, uh, the length gives you basically the uh, amount of different stuff that you have so the amount of different positions that are stored so that gives us already that um, not much more uh, we can do without actually start implementing this um, oh yes yes there is one thing uh, one thing more the direction here uh, that can be transformed into a position. To a uh, position, okay, uh, self. Mm -hmm. And then match uh, self. We can feel the match arms, and then. And here we can define the coordinates. So up is. Same in, same in X, but minus one in Y. Uh, unless, I mean, here we also need to define the coordinate systems. Does Y grow as going down or it does grow as going up? Because usually I, I make it grow going down because that's how basically in console and so on, major, majority of the stuff goes in this way. Uh, but in maths and in Bevy, uh, the Y direction is reversed. It, it, doesn't matter for the problem, really. It's just, as usual, we just need to agree into something. Like, like same as in X. Left is negative, right is positive. We need, we need to agree on that. You can reverse them. It's totally fine. You just need to be consistent. You just need to be consistent. Why is a warning? Usually take self by value. Mm. And self type is copy. Oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, you, you want that, that. I don't care. It really doesn't matter. Um, okay. So that, that transforms and gives us like a, a vector of direction. That's the other thing that we could do beforehand. Um, I cannot think of anything else. Um, I mean, uh, vectors could be added. Vectors, sorry, positions could be added together. Where is the vector? So now, for example, a multiple file, having multiple files to organize the structs and so on might, might be helpful to split this into different files. Um, Give me one second. Is it's possible to overload the plus operator? Overload the plus operator? Yeah, make make such that uh, when you do um, vector, sorry, a, a, a position plus another position, it adds the x and the y automatically without having to uh, compute each of the coordinates individually. Okay. You understand what I mean, right? Sort of. Yeah. Uh, oh, there is a template here in the uh, Raspberry example. Just do a quick search. So I can just paste the example. Operator overloading. Uh, when we add pause into pause. The output is another position. Okay. Right hand side is pause and the output is pause. 
so we do self x so we will return a position such that x is self x plus right hand side i'm going to call it r uh, right side x and uh, y is self y plus r dot y that works okay yeah so this is basically does the sound um that th does this thing let's say that you have um let uh, post one is a pose of x uh, then uh, y 20 okay and you have another position too uh, which is uh, let's call it um, two and one okay then it, you can c c compute uh, position three by post one plus post two and this internally internally is making post three is a post of uh, x post 1 x plus post 2 x comma y post 1 x plus post 2 uh, sorry y <laughs> you see it's very easy to get this wrong and i i, I think that and when you, yeah sorry it automatically gets that from the keyword add yes so this plus uh it's the it's a trait it's another trait so we can teach Rust how to add those structs together. So we, you have a pause plus a pause, like pause here, pause here. Then you can we can teach them how to do that. And you do that by calling this function. And uh, then on self, you have the one on the left. And on R, you have the one on the right. And then the function returns the addition of left plus right. Returns a new one. And then this plus is calling that function so in other words this is doing um this is doing something like post dot colon colon add uh, that is doing a call similar to that not exactly that because this needs to be properly qualified because of the trade or something like that but um which i don't recall how to do but this is the idea so this plus gets converted into a function like that mm -hmm. and this function calls that which basically equates to this code here that's nice okay the thing is that it, it is very easy you saw me when typing that it's very easy to make the mistake here and, and put x again my mistake because just a, a finger Fat, fat finger move and now the code compiles this code will compile perfectly will not give you any error and it's totally wrong and then i guess that mistake is easy for us to do you also use a qwerts keyboard layout uh qwerty mine is oh. qwerty hmm. mine is qwerty but but it's it's not well the key may, may be next or not, but uh, you're typing X, 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 and then you do Y, and then X, X, X. The brain is like that. The brain is yeah. like that. Um, it happened to me. And because you, I expect that we are going to do this several times, I think. Um, I don't want to be typing this so many times. Because, one, because it's tiring. And second, because I can fat finger one of those. And then, good luck finding it. So we do that, and uh, one thing less to care about, and it's convenient. And we learn something. We learn how to make the um, or custom types more powerful. How to make the, the custom types a bit more usable, more convenient. And beca because th this is what this journey is about. It's about learning programming. It's not only about solving a puzzle. It's about learning coding. So it's a good time to to experiment with all, all all this stuff. One thing confuses me though. Yeah, yeah, go on. When we move one up, um, shouldn't it only change one of the two values and not both of them? Oh yeah, wait. Yes. Um, 
Uh, so you have the move up, okay? So let's say you want to move up. So you can do this. Up dot to pause. Okay, and you and you do this. And now you have the up to position. But mm -hmm. this is just only 0, minus 1. Okay? So then it will do plus 0 to the x and minus 1 to the y. No, so x remains unchanged. Ah, oh, that's cool. It's the same it's the same code, but it can handle any kind of movement. You just have to be careful that when you're moving only in one axis, you have to to leave the other axis at zero. Because yes. if not you will be touching it. But yeah. That's amazing. I didn't catch that. But yeah, of yeah. course it makes total sense. Yeah, sorry. You keep keep asking those questions because you know what happens that I I have been working with this kind of stuff so many years because this is very relevant to games. This kind of stuff is very relevant to, to all that sort of games that involve boards or any kind of coordinate system that I feel the supernatural and I'm, I forget to explain these things. I just forget because it's like, come on, I, 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 I learned to code at six years old. And uh, when I learned to code, I was doing games for an old computer, for the computers of the era. And of course, I was learning these at the time. So right now, that's like, I don't know around 30 years in the past. So that, that's why it feels already so natural and I forget totally. But yeah. Um, which, by the way, my my brother has, a, has a two kids, a, a doctor and a, yeah, I don't know the other name for the well, a boy and a girl, and um, and the boy that is younger uh, is displaying a lot of curiosity for for computers and technology. So it's going to be interesting That's because good. it only has three and a half years, and he's already writing some characters into the computer. Three and a half years, and he goes to the laptop and he tries to write his name. It takes a five whole minutes to write his name, but he's super invested into it. I don't know if he if if my brother can can direct him in the right direction, he can be a very good coder uh, after a few I years. I imagine. Yeah. And I imagine the experience you make with teaching me will be extremely helpful for that too. Yes, I make a lot of yeah. Not only to teach, so experience for teaching other people to teaching children, and also to understand myself my own thoughts on how I... Because the problem is that someone said that if you don't know how to explain something, you don't, you don't really know it. And uh, for me, uh, explaining stuff to other people makes me also get, getting a, a deeper understanding of my own knowledge as well. So it's also good for myself as well to get a better idea. Because sometimes um, you or whoever I'm explaining things to came up with questions that I never thought of or I thought they were unimportant but then when I tried to answer I'm like oh wait wait a second wait a second this is not so trivial to explain this is not so trivial the question it's not as stupid as it seems and then you have to backtrack think about it and try to think it better and this process helps a lot and I also su suggest oops sorry I also suggest for you at, at some point, if you want to try to explain it to someone else, what you do, what you learn, or try to explain it back to me. It doesn't matter even if I, if I already know, or uh, try to explain it to, to a Slicer, for example. Um, mm -hmm. it, it does help for you as well when you try to explain, because the, the effort of explaining forces you to, to get a better understanding. It's, it's incredible. So yeah, I think uh, I'll make that a goal to do that sometime. Yeah, yeah, whenever you feel like. Whenever not you today, feel though. Like. Definitely no, not no. today. <laughs> of course, not today. We have we have too much to do today already, um, and and this is going to be very tiring. And it's, it's, if it is already feels uh, a, a bit uh, daunting, what comes next is going to be hard. Yeah. So we need uh, to move the tail and so on. So uh, I guess first a thing to move the head and then a thing to make the tail react.
Yeah, I'm thinking how, how to plug the code exactly. Um, something like I'm thinking like um, let board equals board uh, default and uh, let's call the default method here uh, default. Okay. Um, you, you know what that does, right? Uh, default gives the ability to autofill the values? Yes, to create them. So this is... Um, we have time to explain these things. I mean, uh, that's... So you want to do that yourself. So you, you, so you see how it works. Uh, you implement default for board. So like, I'm going to, to explain to you how to do a, how to create a default value. Oh, it's the... Derive is like a macro that does implementations automatically? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's actually, to be more specific, it's a macro that would write code. It can write anything. It can write anything. It's just hidden. It can write anything. Most of them will write implementation blocks. But I have seen macros that uh, create wall structs with their implementations and so on and so forth. They create uh, like wall programs inside. So it can get as complex as you want, but generic ones, majority of the times is just, it will do a code block. So this trait, again, this is an, an ability, uh, basically needs a bit tough to rust how to make a default. It just needs a function default. Okay. And then this is a function such that, uh, uh, call default and uh, returns a sensible default value for this type, for this custom type, okay? So what is a sensible default? We see that the default code, yeah, Clip is blaming me because it's, it's saying, right now Clip is, is, tell, is telling me, I know, it's telling me that, hey, your default method is just the, the generic macro. Remove your freaking default method and put the macro, put the derived macro on top. Because there is no point of writing something that I can write for you. Yes, I know, Clippy. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so you can see that it's using, again, the default method for the has set. So it's telling has set to bring the default uh, value itself. Okay. But let's say that we want to make this custom. So you do has set new. Okay. And uh, this is the function default. And uh, this is the code that will be written when you do the uh, default macro. I mean, it's the other one with the default in here in visited, but it doesn't matter. Um, that's what it does when you put default. And uh, this allows two things. One, it allows you to put default, but it also allows things like, um, hang on for a second. See, I think you are still following me. Uh, it allows you to do this, dot, dot, default. So like, I want to put a variable, let's call it x, okay, uh, one, two, three. Imagine that board had a variable one, two, three, uh, variable x, i32, that, that doesn't, doesn't matter what it does, okay? And then by default, x is zero, okay? And then it allows you to, to use this construct. This is another property. The default trait allows you to use this construct and, uh, and uh, say, I want this part to be custom, but the remaining fields, I want the default fields. And uh, that is useful for the default trait. And there is a, one last thing that you can use this trait for. Um, if you have another struct, mm, uh, board set, okay? And then you have here a variable called I don't know, said, uh, this doesn't do anything in particular, right? Uh, it's just for uh, for the sake of the... Okay. Imagine, imagine you want for this type, you want a default. You want a default function. It allows you to derive a default here. This is the... the oh, if the type is correct, uh, it will work. It allows you to do this default here because uh, if you don't, if you don't implement default, 
you cannot derive default automatically anymore. You need to specify how to build a default board because it, don't, it no longer knows. So by deriving the trait, now also the macro knows how to do that. And for example, types like hash set do this for you. So that's why you can, instead of doing this, you can just derive the default here and it will know what is the default value for hash set because hash set implements default. In the same way, it knows what is the default number for, for an A32 because A32 implements default. So that's all you can do with the default trait. That makes sense. Okay, because I was typically, what I was doing myself is was, I was creating a function called new uh, and I was returning here uh, the uh, board and so on here, okay, and returning uh, self. But Clippy was catching on me and saying, you're creating a function new, which is basically a default function, should you implement the default trait? I was like, nah, I don't want to do that, I'm not into that, I will think about that. And then like, you know what? Yes, it makes sense. It makes sense. So whenever I want a custom, a custom default, I will, instead of uh, deriving here, I will implement it manually, I'll put my custom default, and that's it. Because that's that's how the, all the Rust ecosystem works and plays with, so uh, it's nicer in the end. So that's the default. Um, so yeah, I mean, learning session today. Um, so we have a board, and uh, then my idea in mind, so imagine this code was all done. How this will play out? I could do something like board dot. Uh, process moves moves uh, that will be a mutable board in such a way that this function this member will read the moves and ap apply the, the whole puzzle program in it and um, change the board with the visited ones and then let visited equals board uh, count visited count um and then uh print the final result uh, amount of uh, squares visited is this the visited okay as you see now no, what i did is I, again i coded the outside right to imagine i'm just Im imagining making up how this could work and uh, what this tells me is that I, I could make the function there the, as a method and uh, that's how it will look like and I'm not displeased. I'm, it doesn't look bad. If we, if we do something like this, it, it will look that bad though. What do you mm -hmm. think? What, what do you think? If we, if we did something like that and then implement in board the process moves and leave this code like this, this will look, will look okay. It definitely looks okay. I'll have to look up again, though, to to get a better idea of process moves and visited count. I mean, process moves, I haven't made it. I'm just imagining ah, it. Ah, okay, okay, I'm, that's I'm, I'm where just, my confusion came from. Yeah, exactly. I'm just imagining it. Like, what if I put, I don't know, a function, a method called whatever, process moves. I'm just making visited a name up. Visited count isn't made either? Uh, that one is made. Uh, maybe we just uh, go to definition. I made it before. It's just the length Which of line? the set. Uh, 131. 131. Implement board, visited count, self visited len. Okay. So, yeah, that, that looks good. So, maybe we can just create the process moves so i agree with that but i am concerned that um like do you want to process the head moves and the tail moves in a single go i still don't know because i because i don't know i'm trying to uh, guess what is appropriate so it's back of deer sorry it's back of deer i was like what uh, this returns nothing, that's correct. I still don't know how I want to play with it. Um, I know that I need some place to store the uh, head and tail. 
so I can do so we have to two ways to go with this we I can create let head equals uh, pause uh, call it the fault uh, and I'm going to implement it as well And that will be by, by default will be in zero zero, uh, and let tail is post default. So, by the way, a quick question, sort of off topic, but yeah. um, I'd like to know: Do you think I can get my C plus plus version of day seven done before January is over? Uh, I'm not sure. Hmm. I think the problem, the the program is very complicated. Yeah, and it takes a lot of time to do that in C++ properly. Uh, even with my Rust C++, uh, I will have a bit of a hard time going through it. Um, I don't know, maybe end of February or something like that. You you will need, you will need to be patient. You will need to be patient and uh, okay. w work slowly because you have a lot to learn in C++. Uh, the program will that program will require you. It's, it's also that you choose. Uh, an, an exercise that is also hard. Like if you picked day one, maybe, or a sample sample programs that are simple, maybe but, but, you can. But, you but can what finish. would they teach me? What would they teach me? Like the big appeal of day seven is that it covers so much at once. Yeah, um, I know, I know. I mean, if you if you have patience, um, don't put high expectations. Just work slowly. And uh, over time, you should be able to manage it. It's just that don't, don't put your hopes up of uh, in, in less than one month, finish with it. Uh, it. It will need time. And it will teach you a lot, yes. It will teach you a lot. But it's like, as usual, you are, you are, you are going the hard path by uh, instead of grabbing a simple program and, le and then another slightly more complicated program to get practice, you are trying with a hard program from the start. So it means that that your your ramp up is very steep, so it takes effort and it will take time to see results. But it's fine because you're learning. You're learning a lot. You're learning a lot, and and if you keep consistency, probably you can get there faster than going through the day one, two, and three one by one until the seven. So it will get you there faster. But you know, as as you. As you want to cl climb a mountain up to the peak, you can go via the path of the mountain that is the longest and uh, it has the, the, the less steepest way, like the, the, the flattest way, but it takes several kilometers. Or you can just escalate up, right up, I don't know, 500 meters and you are done. So that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to just uh, try to scale the mountain just straight up. And uh, it takes effort, it takes time. But at the end, you should be able to get there sooner than going the other way. It's yeah. That it takes takes time and it takes a lot of effort. But yeah, I mean, if one is, if one person is uh, dedicated, uh, yeah, of course, of course. It's just that you, you you don't see the results until you get there. So um, don't try, try to n not to get demotivated by the fact that you are not seeing the results ju just yet because it will take time. That's the difference with taking minor examples that at each example you see the success of, oh, I got up to this example, and now I got up to this example, you see different results. Uh, in this way, you will only see the results after maybe two months. But yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine. So yeah, I was saying, so w one option is putting the head and tail here and uh, work with them, then when the function is out, just destroy them. The other way is to place them in the struct. That will be the other way, and then it will be self-head, self-tail. Uh, and uh, the advantage is that they don't get destroyed. Uh, after the function exits, is they are still available in the board. Um, it's, I don't know. I mean, 
Also, this tells me that if we do, if we go this way, we can also have a function process move mute self move dir that only does one, which is a simple as uh, uh, let's call it move without the e because move with the e is a um, keyword. Um, we could do just one, um, one by one. Um, I kind of like this more. I kind of like this more. And then, now that I'm looking into this, I'm tempted of not creating this function at all. And uh, just go below and create the loop. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because it, it simplifies... It simplifies our thinking. We only have to prove for one movement because the problem doesn't have any special case for after end movements or things like that. It doesn't have any logic, so we can get that out of the way. You 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 see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to remove as much as possible from from the space that I need to think. Instead of thinking of a list of moves, let's think of just one, which is simpler, right? Are you still following me? I got, I got lost. I got lost. <laughs> so, what, what I'm, what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is that if I can make the function just to par to process one, it is simpler to think than uh, parsing several at the same parsing, time. Parsing. Uh, so, so wait. Are, so now, are you considering now to? make head and tail separate or is it about something completely else um thinking of leaving head and tail as separate but inside the board struct mm -hmm. okay uh, what i'm thinking is that thanks to that i can have a function that only does one move at a time like just up down left or right which it seems to me that it's much simpler to think about like just process one single move just one left, one top, or whatever. Uh, it's much simpler to think about than than saying that I want a function that resolves the whole problem. So it seems to me that, that, that I'm slicing the problem into smaller chunks that are easier to, to, to digest and understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't make the code much complex because basically what I did is push the, the loop below. It went below and in line 165, uh, I created the four moving moves and called the process move several times. Um, Are you thinking that it may be good to have first head do all of its moves, uh, store them, and then have T do all of its moves after head has already done all of them? Uh, no. No, because the way the problem is outlined, it seems that we want to do to move head first. So it, it is in the description of the uh, of the problem that you move head and then tail needs to follow. You move head and then tail follows. So um, um, my plan is to implement in the same way that is worded. Usually. What I always prefer is, it, it, the way that something is worded, the code needs to follow the wording as much as possible, to follow the same logic, mm -hmm. to try to, try not to outsmart the requirements. So, if the requirement, uh, unless there is some very specific reason, sometimes you need to outsmart the requirements because efficiency reasons and so on, that you can, if you follow the requirements uh, to the letter, sometimes you get so to something that is unworkable in, in, um, in the program, but if you can follow them, I, I really prefer to follow them because then I can read the code, I can read the problem, and I can see if they match or not. And I like that. I like that a lot. I like to, to, to read the code and be able to translate the code to the problem text and the text the text of the problem back to the code and see that they, they do match. I like that. You, you don't know how much I like that. It's just, <laughs> I'm, I'm passionate about that, about having the code say the same thing, that I can read it aloud and, and basically read the same thing so it will I, be, I agree with that uh, it will be 
Cat first, and then Tail follows. Good. So, okay, now that we're saying that, now that we're saying that, uh, so I think it's very simple. Uh, head, so self head, it will be basically equal to self head plus move to pause. So we can convert that into a position vector, so like a movement in, in, in numbers, and add it to the head, and then the result, we store it back to the head. Um, we, could, mm -hmm. we could do something like plus equals move to pause. Okay. But that, I think, requires a different trait. Uh, yeah, ah, here in the error, it's telling me, uh, let me let me copy the error. This is very interesting. If you read carefully the errors, it tells you an implementation implementation of a standard ops at the sign might be missing for pause. So why not we just go and create it? Now we are into this, we can just go and create it. Where it is, where it is, where it is? Uh, pause here, uh, just above, I was looking so, uh, it's called add sign, and now implement missing members. Ah, so now this is self equals uh, self plus right hand side. Sword so positions, what do you, why? Ah, yes, we need to do the reference to the left hand side. No? What? That post there. It is clone. Why you don't like me? <laughs> uh, I think it's getting personal. Clone? No. Why? Uh, Cargo check to see. Oh, it tells me here in the console. Can you see the console? What I was missing? I can, s but wait, I knew. Uh, mismatch types or could uh, not come? Line 125 is adding uh, a, a, an asterisk on the left. Says, help, consider the referencing here to assign to the mutable, mutably borrowed value. Mutably borrowed. Mut mutable borrowed value, yes. Because self is a mutable self, so it's a reference, it's a pointer internally. You need to say that you want to write, not, you don't want to write a new memory address. You want to write into the value that, mem that memory address is pointing to. So this is speaking in C terms. Okay? So okay. it's the same as, as in C, it's just this has a different way of speaking or different way of understanding in, in Rust, but it's the same logic. You can understand Rust logic and apply it to C++ and C++ logic and apply it here. So basically, in order to write, we need to specify that we do want to write into the value that self is pointing to. We don't, we don't want to change uh, what is the, the actual borrow, what self is borrowing to. Is there are two options. So self is a pointer to, and you could make it point to a different position. The, the different struct in a different point in memory. That's not what we want. We want to change the values. Right, right. And this is one bug that Rust has catched, and I'm not sure if C++ will catch that. Because I think that in C++ is valid, the other code. It will just do a, a freaking mess. Uh, or maybe it's not valid, but there is a, a different ways of making them valid, and not all of them are correct. Uh, and right now, uh, now Clippy, in line 142, is blaming us for making the addition when we have the plus equals. Yes. This whole ampersand and uh, asterisk thing, that is a worry that's never there in Python, I guess. Oh yeah, that's never in Python, JavaScript, all the scripted languages, they don't have pointers. If the language is scripted, they don't have pointers. Java also doesn't have pointers. 
Uh, Wait, does that mean that all scripted languages have garbage collectors? Yes. Including Lua? It should, yes, it should. It should. So th there are there are only th there were there were let's speak a bit historically, there were only two ways to go. Either you manage your own memory at the with the C or C style. Okay, you manage your own memory, you decide when to malloc, when to allocate and when to free. Or you have a garbage collector. They, they, that those were the only two options. Rust became so disruptive because it added a third. The third, which is in the middle, where Rust kind of manages the memory uh, at, the, at compile time, and you don't manage it, and you don't have a garbage collector. So Rust is amazing. It is amazing. I, I tend to say that Rust has a garbage collector in compile time. It's a garbage collector in compile time. I mean, this this statement is totally wrong. It, you cannot say that, but in some sense, it's true. In some sense, it's true because it, it is managing the memory for you. It's deciding, like a garbage collector, when to um, create the memory, when to destroy it for you. In all instances, um, but it's not uh, it's not adding what is called a runtime, something that runs in the background with your program that does the garbage collection. It's something that it does at compile time and it decides by itself when to put the malloc and where to put the free. That's what Rust is doing. So Rust internally is basically transforming this into kind of a C code that is creating the alloc and free for you in the right places at all times by following the rules. And then you don't have to care about that. And garbage collector is the wrong... Garbage collectors are good. Uh, they have the, the they have limitations. No, no, I mean uh, the, the I mean the wording. because uh, you say it's wrong to say that, but is there maybe a way to say it that isn't wrong but still gets the message across? I mean, you, you could say it because I mean I do say it. Just basically, basically point out that that maybe it that, doesn't that's collect not... the garbage, but it points it out. No, I think that. Garbage collector at, at compile time, it kind of brings the point, what it means, okay? Just that if someone tells you that that is not correct, just reply that you know that that is technically not correct. Technically, that's that's not correct. Technically, that's not possible. But but it gets the point across. They should understand what you mean if you say garbage collector at compile time, because it's the same thing, but happens at compile time that translates into assembly language, and then you don't care anymore. You don't you don't get the garbage collector at runtime. It's what it is, but it's it's not a garbage collector. So it's a garbage collector at compile time, which is not a, a, a garbage collector. But I think. Uh, I love I love this expression of garbage collecting at, at compile time because it, it gives the point across because it's doing the same thing as Python or JavaScript deciding where to create the memory when to destroy it by itself. You don't have to care about it. It's just that all happens in the compilation step and the binary it only has a log and free doesn't have to have a garbage collector anymore. I think it's I think it's a very good analogy. I mean. It all depends on who you talk to, okay? Maybe so, garbage separation would be a good analogy? If you give it a different name, it would be just confusing. Because garbage collector, people know what a garbage collector is. Uh, if you give garbage something, something, uh, they will be like, what? I mean, it is new. Uh, but then what you're trying to do right now is brand it for Rust. Um, that's a discussion for them to brand it as some fancy wording. Like you want to put that, to put it a proper name. That's I think that's up to the Rust committee to find um, if they want to put a name into that and uh, decide for them what that's called. I mean, if if we made up names for ourselves, it only works for you and me. Everyone else, when you say the name, they will be confused because they don't know what it is. And if they look it up, it's nowhere. Anyway, and uh, another thing, I see here a very common that this is dir to move. So we are adding a direction into this. I can also, speaking of implementing, oh, I'm scrolling up too much. Uh, it's just here. I can also tell it that 
I know how to add a dir into POS. Are there compiled languages with garbage collectors? No. Boy. Okay, I'm going for lunch. Uh, okay. Um. So I will leave you here for 30 minutes if you want to do anything, or if not, you can uh, take also the, 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 the... But yeah, feel free to try anything. Uh, yeah. What I did right now is that I don't need to do the conversion anymore in process move. Anyway, I need to be running. Um, okay, have a good lunch. I will see okay. what I can do and I I'll try. I'll try for a bit at least. Okay, I'll follow you here and ensure that I'm not... So at part one, let visited board visited board process move. Process move, and we are. So let me actually do a print ln here. It's what I always do to get an idea of things of stuff. This is self dot head. Print it out just like that, or will you complain? Doesn't implement display, but do you implement the debug? That you do. So let us compile this. Or go check. Oh, my terminal is a terminal is a bit broken. It seems. Huh. I can only read the last four lines. That's a bit unfortunate, but whatever. Wait, build failed? Ah, cargo check. Okay. Uh, what happens when I do uh, when I do clear? Hmm. Broken still. Unfortunate, but I. Uh, it will do. This is self head dot pass. That looks actually pretty good. That actually looks pretty good. Out of squares visited. Uh, the problem is, I now need to recognize um, when it moves diagonally. Where was that part in the advent of code description? Due to nebulous reasoning involving Planck lengths, you should be able to model a positional two-dimensional grid following a hypothetical series of motions for the... Let's be quite short. The head and tail must always be touching. Then overlapping both as touching. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. 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 So uh, here. Hello. Print. If one equals two, else a self dot 
Hail plus equals Moth. And good or will you complain? Self dot tail. Wait, is this actually valid code? Argo check. It is valid code, it just doesn't do the autocorrect for me. Which I do not approve. Uh, I unfortunately don't know off the top of my memory what the whole key combination is, but David can do that when he will be back. Uh, okay, then let's do cargo run. Okay. Okay. <laughs> collision, 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 collision. Now we should be working with the type of collision thing is my guess. If Yes, now we definitely need to move with collision physics. Oof, that is going to be rough. That is that is a bit of a weakness of mine. Um if self dot dot x is Equal to, uh, unfortunate, I don't know a syntax that means is within the range of, that I imagine could be helpful. Uh, equals self dot head dot x. Wait, but wait, but wait, is there not a way to, to make use of the dot pos thingy? Dot pause, dot pause, where is it? To flat back, no, no, from to pause. To pause. Ah. Self, what is self? Mood board, and the board has pos. If self dot head Self. 
bot does bot bot does not have the copy trade so i will have to do self dot head dot clone plus one or dot add dot pause dot pause dot pause an iterator no dot pause for struct pause but it's wait head dot clone dot but I, I'm copying head struct board oh I'm copying only head I guess I'm supposed to do clone no clone dot head dot No method named pause. Dot add a sign. Dot add. I think it's best if I just type this out manually. So dot x is equal to Oh shit, oh shit, oh no, what did I do? 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 Go back, go back. Okay. If self dot head dot x. Head dot Y plus minus one 
zero self dot head dot tail no oh, self dot Hello, hello. Welcome back. You already done? Yes. Hope it was tasty. Oh yeah, it was tasty. Yeah, Lucia did a very nice lunch for me. That's the good thing of having my girlfriend at home. That she does a lot of stuff for me. That's cool. Uh, I figure that we have to do something with collision physics here. Um, also? Um, basically, if H is within the range of... I, I, I have a difficult time showing you not being on stream. Um, but like, if... If a head is within the range of... Um... Oh, yeah, yes, yes, um, yes, um... And now my, the thing that I was trying to do, and I would like to continue if you are okay with it, because yeah, I yeah. think I may want to something. Yes. Um, the problem was just as usual trying to find the proper syntax. Oh, hold on, hold on, what, what... Um, I hope I'm not breaking stuff. Match self dot tail. Okay, let me look up the syntax again. Value arrow. Uh, so, uh, oh no, where is it? Virtual machine, there you are. Self dot head dot x plus one. Ah. No, match may not be right here after all. Like, uh, how uh, how can I check for many conditions at once? Uh, for this particular case, majority of people will have chosen for an if else if pattern. If else if that was my initial uh, guess too, then I figured match may be better. But now I see no, no, this is actually not what I want. Like the thing is, it, it, it like <laughs> if. One or two is equal to one or two, one or three. Yes, no. else no. So this syntax here is not correct, but I would like something like that. 
what the syntax is supposed to do? Um, um, I, can, can you put it in words? I mean, self head dot mix self dot y self head dot self tail dot x self tail dot y um i want it to hold on um, i want it to check that whether the head after it has moved is still within the range of tail and for that i'd like to do tail x um, the range from tail x uh, minus one to plus one tails uh, y from minus one to plus one and compare that to both head positions but wait wait no this is completely wrong this is completely wrong because no no it, it it's still right if both apply ah this is tricky this is tricky So, you want to know the distance between tail and head? Yes. So, you want something like, uh, let this is self, uh, tail minus self head. <clears throat> Uh, distance um, like yeah something like max absolute or something like that max absolute so I mean that what doesn't do they do? That, that doesn't work either so because that's not implemented but you, you want you want uh, in with all the code glory okay is you want uh, I'm really looking forward to the day where that will be natural for me too. Uh, yeah, for this you need practice on, on making games, which you are going to do at some point. Yes. So for, for this, I want to do it at some point soonish. Like I have, a, so the C++ course is in. If if everything will work out, then um, it should start in March. Until then, I would like to make more progress on. Uh, the advent of code collab with you i would like to um to finish or at least no i would like to finish i would like to finish my c plus plus version of the advent of code day seven and i'd like to return to be ballistics because mm -hmm. it's been forever since i have done something on that yeah and yeah. the next thing for me to figure out there is still collision on ball physics because right now the ball physics don't react as I would like them to. Yes. That makes sense. Okay, so what, what I wrote here computes the distance that you want. Okay, so basically you want to, to compute the delta, so the difference between two vectors. Remember that we were talking about this in uh, collisions. My presentation for collisions. So those are co positions can be considered vectors because they are two coordinates. So basically, subtracting one vector to the other uh, to get the the vector from one to the other, and then uh, getting the absolute value. So converting the negatives into positives. Oh wait, Be absolute value. Absolute value is that like like the the uh, Pythagoras thing? Mm, no, uh, absolute value. Is basically converts any negative into positives. Ah so yes, yes, okay. Minus one into plus one, minus two into plus two, so on. True, but I remember that one, and I also remember that at one point I had to use apps instead of um, multiplying with minus one. Do you recall why what why, why that was? No, I don't remember why. It rings a bell, but I don't remember why. 
so yeah uh, so that, that computes the uh, the width so the the uh, space in x direction from one to another and the space in y direction from one to other to the other and then you want to see to get whichever is bigger the x or the y coordinate okay that that's what you want but this is bit ugly here <coughs> So, um, follow me for a second, and I'll, I'll try to let you Following? write this for for me. So, we want to subtract. So, instead of add, do we have a sub? We have a sub. Okay. Uh, then, subtract is that minus that, that minus that. Okay, so that will simplify your code a bit because then you now can do uh, this minus self L. The problem is that you cannot do apps here. Uh, let, let, let me comment out this part here. So this exactly. So now the problem is that we cannot call ups here. So because we cannot call ups here, oh, this one is wrong. Ah, yes, because it's, uh, okay, the function is not called other. So traits need specific functions. So for subtract, it's called sub. And let's call this r again. Or maybe can we just rename it because if, it's going to place it like that every single time. I don't want to be fighting it. Okay, so now uh, we can implement pause and create a function called apps uh, self return self. Okay, and then is this is uh, because. Apps is not a trade, right? Not that I know of. M maybe this. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know. It doesn't matter. Uh, so the absolute of the vector is basically x is x apps uh, self x. Y is self y apps. Okay. So basically what I'm doing is, instead of putting the code with very complex logic, we start placing the logic as different abilities that the type can do, making it more powerful. At the same time, so each of those abilities is very easy to prove that it's correct. And then we can uh, reduce the logic uh, again and again in steps. And now we have here two lines. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. which could be uh, uh, resumed as let this equals um, self tail distance two and we put self head and we want to do this inside One second, so because I want to paste before I forget the uh, so to uh, uh, yes to self and this returns an i32 because it's one of the items and then from self to two so self minus two apps it's blaming me on that minus oh yes the reference the reason of the, the reference by the way is because this is implemented for the base type and not for the reference type you can also implement implement it again for the ampersand pause but that's a lot of work 
which yeah. I'm not into doing that, and putting just a asterisk is not that bad. So then we just return this. Do you have an intuition of which stuff is borrowed and has to difference in stuff? I got it after three or four months of working in Rust because I was uh, getting also from my knowledge from C++. I uh, basically... Uh, at first I, I got it like that and then it told me the compiler here and then it says cannot subtract, let me try to copy the message. It says cannot subtract post for ampersand poc, post. I'm like, okay. One of those is a reference, the other is not. So I need to make the, uh, which one is the reference? And then I look, and then yes, self is a reference, that's true. I always forget this is a reference. Thank you, I put it here, save, and it goes away, like, okay, that's done. But I really have to look into the error every single time, and uh, I get the errors every single time. I, I don't have enough intuition to put it beforehand. If I was doing an interview myself, trying to code, uh, in a whiteboard, I will be missing all of those 90% of the time. I see. But That's yeah. reassuring. But yeah, uh, so then we have distance to, and uh, now we you have this to work with. Okay, so you could have like if, or you can do even a match if you want. Uh, so you have several cases. Uh, zero. Um, uh, file doesn't move. Uh, oh, true! It just doesn't move. Yes, if one is on top of the other, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't move. Uh, one. It also doesn't move. If it is still one, uh, two still moves, and any other number, uh, that is very, that is cool. The, the panic message. Yes. I wouldn't have thought of that. No, yeah, because I think that we, we want we want to catch all the errors possible. So this is also uh, called uh, defensive def defense, defensive programming, where you want that all invalid states, no matter how improbable, you want to catch them all and make them fail, fail, and uh, tell you why. Um, because this is going ah wait 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 this is I, I missed the debug missed the debug here That's the, that is the problem the, this this condition if it happens it will tell us that we have a bug in our code straight away and it will help us uh, for, for, to, for beginners, this already tells us that uh, stop working on what you're doing, something is wrong, uh, it is stopped being, being valid here. So, because if not, you will spend another hour working with stuff and then suddenly the program breaks in some random situation and you don't understand why. One hour before, you, you made the bug and you didn't catch it. The other thing is that it will make uh, some random solution and say, oh, the solution is 123. And then you plug the, the value and like, no, that's not it at the end. Why not? It turns out that it's all along failing in here and you didn't cover the case. So that that's why. Uh, always, this, this is basically good practice. I mean, it's not required, it's good practice. Uh, so yeah, you will have the tail movement here, which you can also, you can also do uh, self uh, move tail. Uh, something like that. And uh, code everything in, in there. 
so you don't have to, in such a way that, that you don't have to code inside the match. You, you get what I mean? Yes, yes. That also makes sense. Move tail, you didn't make that yet, right? No. Good. Uh, as usual, I'm making stuff up. I'm just thinking like, it would be nice if we could call here a function that had the contents and then, whoop, then I just ma I made the stuff up without having it. You are play placing the function beneath. I take it this would not be possible in C++? Um, yes, for this particular case, because oh. this this will be a class definition, mm -hmm. and because the class definition goes from here to here, uh, everything that is in in the middle, uh, they can be rearranged as you, as you like. Okay. Okay. It, it, this does, does not apply when you have different classes or different functions at the main level, but for things that are inside, yes, you can. In C plus plus, you can. In C++, you can also reorder the functions, the, the, the top ones, and put them in out of order. As long as you put on the top of the file, you put the function definition. And then, uh, once you define it at the top, uh, it allows you to put the contents wherever you want. So yeah, it's a bit cumbersome, but... Once you do it like 10 years straight, it feels... I don't know, natural? It feels normal. So yeah, here we need to move the tail. And uh, basically, for example, here I know that uh, is uh, if uh, in the same row, uh, move left, right, one cell. Uh, if in the same column, move up down one cell if not uh, move diagonally um, in both axes towards the head so I level options are um, up left uh, down plus left uh, wait same row move left right one cell same column okay that makes sense move diagonally okay up plus left, down plus left, up plus right, down plus right. Okay, yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. Wait. Yes. 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 That makes sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically translating the text into here into comments, and uh, was hoping that you can fill up the code in the middle. Oh shit! Okay. Ah. Uh, hmm. If in the same, but wait, code in the middle. We need to be given something though, right? Uh, no, no, because it is an implementation, but it has to... Self-head and self-tail. Self-head and self-tail. Uh, Self-move... Wait, move-tail. Move... Oh, so it, it needs to give either head or tail. So... But wait. Just so you see it. If self head, 
Okay. Okay. Uh, um, hold here and uh, the return is mandatory. The return is mandatory. Forget about Clippy that is warning me that the return doesn't need to be there. I know it will be needed. Return makes it so that the rest of the function is ignored. Is, is ignored, yes. We will see later if we want to do return or we want to do if else if. We will choose that later. If self head equals, then we will need to self. Hail dot y or self yes equals equals what um comments are reversed from the code so I'm going to reverse them so it makes sense now my fault because I started with X and uh, I placed row first. So, yeah, there's a problem with missing up row, column, X, and Y. Equals. Do I need to make use of the post method here? No. Um. Basically, you want to to see. Uh, if the head is above or below, let, let me okay. Let, let me just uh, if self tail. Oh wait, wait. Why less than? Continue writing. If I am fifty percent confident that this is correct or not. Okay. Plus no equals. Incorrect. It's not a variable. It's a constant. What it was there. Just a regular number. It's just a regular number. But wait. Move up. Move up, down one cell. Left, right one cell. Move die. Wait. Up, down, up, um, up, down. But it has to know whether this is a positive movement or a negative movement, right? Th that's why I wrote an if that is still unfinished, waiting for you to finish the if. Okay, if. Y plus equals Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Else Be paste minus equals one. That all there is to it? Yeah. Okay, uh, nice. Semicolons, safe to oops, safe on format. Uh, yes. That's all there is to it. And uh, now you do here the next one. That should be easy. Copy paste Y Y X X X X um, Plus equals one still valid? Yes, so look into I was updating the, the comments so move left right one cell so that one cell is this one that you have, okay? 
to bring tail closer to head and then you can just see the, this if condition so you're saying that tail x is less than head x how do you bring it closer so if this is less than it means that you have to increment to bring the number closer to this number so you increment by one bringing it closer if it, is the, if it is the reverse you decrease it to bring it closer and that logic applies to both Oh, but it's, it's, oh, wait, but wait, this return is, it's, why is a warning here? Oh, because there is no code below and it's blaming me that I think a uh, returning ah, here it's... does nothing, but we still have the last part that's probably the most complex one. If not move diagonally, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So I have okay. a trick. I do have a trick. Okay. Because this direction, so we are guaranteed that we we have a, a delta. That there is a difference in both axes, in the vertical and the horizontal axis. There is a, a difference in position. So neither x is the same, and neither y is the same. Also, the ifs are on top. So this means that if we reach here, neither x or y is the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now if I do. A delta is self uh, tail minus self head. Wait a second, because now after that we want to do self tail plus equals delta. So that means that uh, is this correct if I do? Let's try with with numbers. We want to make sure that this because when I do this, I tend to reverse the uh, the arguments, putting on the left what they should be on the right. It happens always to me, so I I always check it. So let's say that we do delta is three minus two, uh, then tail three plus so this is one plus one. This is incorrect, but it's four. That doesn't bring it closer. It brings it farther away. So that means that this is reversed. Now, if you do that, that is 2 minus 3. It does minus 1. That's plus minus 1. That just gives 2. And it matches the the head. It matches head. Correct. That is correct. Okay. The only difference is that... Um... Uh, uh, let delta again. I'm going to redefine it because there is no point in getting a, another variable. Um, I mean, I could, I could write a function for this. So the problem is that if, if this delta is more than one, I want to put one. So uh, if dx. Uh, Major the one, so the the absolute value of the x needs to needs to be one. So, for example, if delta x was two, for example, we want it to convert into a one. If it was minus two, we want to convert it to minus one. Same for and same for the for the y axis. Um, so far, so good. I'm I'm not following at all. I'm paying attention, but what what is happening now is above me so what i'm trying to do is construct the directions from the difference uh, in position of both so you have something like tail and um, head okay but for example in one coordinate there are two two spaces and in the other coordinate, there is one space. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I uh, if I leave this code like this, okay, this code is basically the same as saying that self tail is equals to self head. Like if, if you follow the maths, uh, the the delta cancels out and, uh, and and equates to that when you do all the math, which means that it will uh, put 
tail and head in the same spot. And that's not what, not, not what should happen. What should happen is that it should the tail should move one down, one right, and come, come here. Let's put a star where it was before. It should do that move. So, delta, delta contains uh, one to the right, two, uh, sorry, two to the right, one uh, below, okay? Mm -hmm. so, something like that is, uh, it's like uh, one comma, one comma two. But we can only move in in a, in a maximum of one. So it must be either w plus one or minus one and plus one or minus one. To put in another in another words, the maximum speed that we can move is one cell at a time. Yes. Okay. Even in diagonal, diagonal counts as one cell. Okay. So 1,1 comes as one cell, and 0,1 will come as one cell as well, but that's not this case. Um, it is also determined how exactly we must move, right? Yes, but the, the way that we, that we must move, from what I got from the problem, is basically is always diagonal for this case, but always towards head. And then I don't need to code the whole thing that, the, that is written in there. Here is where I am not going to follow what it says literally, because what it says literally is much harder to write correctly, because, it's, because it has a, a bunch of cases, it has a lot of ifs. If you, you need to start comparing, I'm above, I'm below, I'm left, I'm right, and it, it takes a lot of. So, or putting in a, in another in another way, what I want to do. Or maybe this version is just simpler. Um, uh, self head x greater than no, not a much. It's put an if. It's, it's going to be shorter. Uh, self tail x. So if the if the head is to the right, then we move to the right. If not, we move to the left. You know what? This is simpler than the one I wanted to do. It's the same, but it's, it's simpler to see. At delta equal pos if if an if condition inside the struct. Okay, okay, okay. That's, that, that looks cool. That's what that, I have to say about it. It looks cool. That's one of the things cool in Rust because this, that is not valid code in C++. C++, that, that doesn't work. In C++, you need to create uh, let dx do... Yeah, I, I already experienced uh, so, <laughs> sort of similar stuff. And then do dx equals this, dx equals that, and then put here dx. Um, yeah. But in Rust, you can do this. And um, I think that if if you don't go overboard, because of course if you go overboard, it's pointless. And uh, I would say if, if it is too long, put it outside. But this is short enough that it can be read directly. And yeah, and this is also a kind of quote unquote abusing the fact that Rust will return the value outside. So. This statement returns one, and this statement returns minus one to the outside of the if. So the if is an expression that computes to one or minus one. There's something cool of Rust because in other languages, ifs don't return values. That doesn't make any sense in any other language that I know of. So yeah, this is the delta. And now that you have the delta, it's just self tail plus equals delta. Ah, what's below? <laughs> okay, okay, um, okay. Yeah, sounds good to me. Um, I mean, yeah, this part is a bit too much for you because this is a lot of logic 
plus intuition on 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 the 2D space. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I feel completely fine not understanding this today. Yeah, as I said before, it's, it's, you, you are competing with 30 years of experience doing this stuff since I was six. So like, of course, of course, of course, for me, this is not relevant for you. This is still struggling. Like you just started less than one year ago. And, uh, and uh, there is a lot of people that, that I don't know, they could work at Google perfectly that will have problems following this kind of concept so fast. I could explain that they, they, they will understand fast, but for me, it's typically fast and faster than them on, on, on those because, I mean, they have experience with other stuff where I'm very slow on other stuff. In this particular thing, it turns out that I am very fast with that because I have too much practice. Maybe, maybe it's too much. I don't know. Anyway, um, we are missing something. Just one piece. One piece. Here in line 186, we are missing marking the tail in the new place. So after we move the tail, or, well, after we move the tail, you know what? That is in move tail. So after we move the tail, we need to get uh, how it's called visited. Visited, we need to insert uh, uh, it's not insert. Is set? No. What's called? To add something. Retain. Uh. What? Ah, I don't see it. Seventy. Will you make me open the help? Capacity clear. I don't see it here. Retain. Hash. This you are using a hash set, right? Because we don't want duplicates. Yes, it's a hash set. Yes, because you cannot visit twice. Um, I mean, we can, we just don't want to track it. Exactly. We want specifically to omit that. So, uh, Rust, I gave up, so looking for dogs. And I'm going to do a... It is not insert. It is not insert. It, it, it's, it's just not showing me. For some reason, that probably will tell me now. And tile is a pause, and visited is of type pause. Uh, Method insert exists, but its trade were not satisfied. Ah. Yes. Does that mean? Yes. Uh, so you can see the console, right? I hold, yes, but I gotta scroll down. Insert self tail. Following trade bounds were not satisfied. Post egg, post hash. So basically, it's telling me that in order to, do, to use insert, whatever you are inserting to as the key, okay, the keys need to have two abilities, two traits, okay? So Rust must know how to do two things. One, how to compare for equality. Heck, is for equality. So how to do position one is equals to position two. Is it equal, mm -hmm. is it the same position or is it not the same position? Which we don't have. We, we didn't teach uh, Rust how to do that. And uh, hash uh, is another trait uh, to be able to convert something into a hash, uh, which means to create a signature. No, you, you know hashes, M MD5 and so on? Yes. Okay, so in programming you can also you can also have hashes specifically for hash maps and hash sets. Turns out that this they internally work with hashes. So converts your data into a random scramble that is guaranteed that every time that you get the same data, you get the same random scramble, same as the MD5. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just that is um, usually much shorter and much faster to run than an MD5 or SJ or something like that. It's much shorter and much faster. That and makes sense. It uses it uh, this internally in order to store it fast and to compare it fast. So hashing is the part critical on how to implement this internally. So if you were to, to code yourself your own hash set, you, you will need to leverage the fact that the property of the hashes and, and their randomness to exploit it in order to get those fast inserts, fast retrieves, fast deletions. 
uh, because if not, you will be implementing something like a list and you will be iterating all along. And, uh, and this is what it, it does internally to, to make it fast. And then we have a help. Consider the annotating post, struct post, with derive equal eq hash and partial ec. I think this is very helpful. And says that it's in line 108. I should add this. So let's copy that. Line 108. Smooth 108. And I see that we have the other derives, um, derives, so I'm going to just integrate them together. And I see no errors anymore. Gigi! Okay. Ah, derive. That's where it was missing. Yes, so we could have implemented that ourselves to teach it how to do equality, hash, and so on, because equality is basically returning true or false if both parameters are equal. But, I mean, we, we were going to do the same thing as he's going to do with, the, with the, deriva, the, the derive, because the derive is going to test for equality for both of them and so on. So, less work to do, less things to worry about. It's just, you know, that is the same way we implemented for add and sub and so on, we can do for the others. Um, yeah. So, I'll say, I'm saying, let's run it. Okay. Crossing figures. Amount of squares visited for, let's see. That's, that's not correct. No, 13 it should be. That's hmm. incorrect. That is incorrect. There are negative uh, values. Yeah, yeah, that, that is uh, to be expected. Is it? Yeah, because we start somewhat in the center. So if we go to the... Uh, we, do we? Do we start in the center? Like it, if, it if I look at the... Start in the corner. Uh, let's see. If I look at the initial state, the S, which represents the starting point, is always at the bottom left. Oh, yes, but uh, or Y increases towards the bottom, not towards the top. So all the Y values are, are negative. Okay, oh, that, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that yeah, is something. Yeah. Wait a second. Something is probably trivially wrong. We did something trivially wrong because uh, it says amount of squares visited four. That will mean that tail. Let's 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 remove the head where it is uh, and run it without the the bug for the head. Um, without the what? Without uh, head being printed. So only tail. So I see one value, two, three values, four values different, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I see thirteen values. So here is the question: Why? Why it says four when I do actually count thirteen? So something is stupidly wrong here. Something is stupidly wrong because we did the. Visited insert self tail. Let's print the visited um, to see what, what we did because it seems that the algorithm it might be correct, but as I'm saying, something looks strangely wrong. Oh, sorry. Or visit. That's it. It only stores four values. So, for example, the last value, I don't see it. Oh! Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. We, we, we are only inserting. Uh, when uh, it moves in diagonal um, and that's the problem of making it here that it's confusing so to avoid making it that confusing uh, going to add it in 
gear, even if it's going to apply, even if the tail doesn't move, we don't care because it's going to overwrite to, over the same place. So yes. now it's 13. Okay. Ah, okay. nice. Okay. Trivial error. Uh, so there are 13 positions to visit at least once. That is the same number as we got. Let's try without the, the sample data. 6332. 6332. Oh, that's the right answer. Got a golden star. GG. Now I'm anxious. What is part two? Let's see what is part two. A robot snaps. Wow, bad. Suddenly the river is getting a lot closer than you remember. Oh wait, can, can you can you uh, paste the text again? Oh yes, I... yes, 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 yes. Let me just copy the whole problem. Okay, I see you scrolling. Yeah, I'm trying to find uh, here. Here. Line 255. Let's make it 256. So, yeah. The robot snaps. Suddenly, the river is getting a lot closer than you remember. The bridge is still there, but some of the ropes that broke are now whipping toward, towards you as you fall through the air. Wow. Drops are moving too quickly to grab. You only have a few seconds to choose how to arc your body to avoid being hit. Okay. Fortunately, your simulation can be extended to support longer ropes. If we only have a few seconds, does, doesn't that mean that we are automatically game over already? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we were being serious, yes, it's already game over. Just reading the problem, we don't have enough time. Rather than two nuts, you now must simulate a rope consisting of 10 knots. One knot is still the head of the rope and moves according to a series of motions. Each knot further down the rope follows the knot in front, it, in front of it using the same rules as before. Using a series of motions as the book example, but with the knots marked 1 uh, H and 1 to 9. Yes. I, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, yes, I get it. I get it. I get it. Will it be very difficult? I, I hope not. It, it needs some refactoring, but it should work. I have dinner in 40 minutes, by the way. Sorry? Hmm? What did you say? I have dinner in 40 minutes. Ah, okay. Okay. I will be good because I also need to stop. Uh... Okay, speedrun challenge for day 9 part 2. Yeah, question is... Yes, that's clear. Uh... Yeah, 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 that's clear. More types of motions are possible than before. Actually, no. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same logic. It's the same logic. Oh, uh, that means. Does it mean it's trivial? Needs a bit of refactoring, but yes. Uh, we have That's reassuring. A larger example that we could replace later on. Uh, uh -huh. Wait, same logic, but 10 instead of 2, right? Can we add a constant? 10 instead of 2, 10 instead of 2. No, there's a, almost. I think you're off by 1. So it's 10 plus the head 
instead of one plus the head. So it's head, nine segments, and tail. Simulate your complete series of motions on a larger rope with 10 knots. How many positions does the tail of the rope is at least once? Can you add a constant here or not? Yes, yes, but it needs more work. Oh, I see. More work is not good. So we have the new example that we need to compare to. Oh, is this the first time that a second example is given? Yes. Wow. Wow. Let's make this um, the main file. What is the main function? What is the main function here? Um, for the file path, uh, if we are in part one. Is this one? Anything else? We are in simple input two. So by default, the simple input will be the the second input for the second problem and first input for the first problem. <sighs> now I kind of feel bad about asking to do copies earlier. To do copies of what? Sorry, what? Ah, like, yeah, you, yeah, right. You you get what I mean. So what need, needs to happen is that we need kind of to decouple this head and tail. So we have something like rope, a bag of boss. Okay. And the problem is that it depends on the size that you want. So this cannot be longer it cannot can no longer be default or you we need to initialize with a rope so uh, um, self uh, size you size uh, why doesn't like me? Ah, okay. It doesn't like me, and that's it. Um, it's basically a vector of post default uh, size. Basically saying that put the default position size amount of times into the rope. And then this init rope needs to be called beforehand with two elements as uh, self board in function part one yeah because we are we are going to try to refactor that because then on the part two is going to be exactly the same but with 10 11 is 11. 10 plus the head so we need to be careful on the, those things uh, and it should be the same so now the problem is that head and tail need to go so Head yeah, is uh, uh, rope first or rope zero, and uh, this one is rope last uh, or rope of rope len minus one. Will you be able to fix this? Uh, 
Um, mm. Wait a second. Before, before, before that, we are going to create a commit in Git so we don't. Uh, day 9 part 1 solved. So before breaking the code. And now we try to break the code. So I comment this out. And I need to go. I'll leave you working on this. Um, Gonna uh, try my best. I'll give you like I don't know, ten to twenty minutes. Uh, okay. I need to do some stuff. Okay. See you then. Okay. See you. Okay. My goal for now: do at least something useful. At least something that is mildly useful. Let's see. Uh, <sighs> Function init rope. Mm. Init rope, where is it? Init rope. Maybe if I click here, you can give me to get me to init rope. Ah, ah, it's an implementation of board, yes. Ah, I need to fix the implementation. Good, 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 good. Init a rope. Distance to self head. Oh, this is a mess. This is such a mess. Um, head. Um, I don't think I can fix that. I don't think I can fix that. Uh, it, it's. I, I feel like trying to play a video game without the main character now. Or without any character. Like head and tail are the characters, but the characters are gone now, and I need to beat it. And I don't know how. Ah, uh, process move. Plus equals move. Okay, let me go back to part one. Uh, parse input, yes, moves into flat vec. Init rope, for move in moves, process move. Let visited board visited count. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. Um, I <laughs> rope first, rope last. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So those are two new functions. Where are they? Where are they? Rope dot first. Rope dot len minus one. Rope dot first or rope zero? Oh! Is that it already? Rope Ro but wait, rope dot self dot rope. Ah Okay. Okay, okay, okay. No! Undo. What? Undo, undo. Face. Dot. What?
Ah, uh, yes. Okay, I am half back. Half back. Okay, welcome. I I just uh, it took me a while to understand what I need to do. Uh, your comment up here was extremely helpful. Yeah, um, I will be listening and uh, doing what you're doing. Okay, um, like like because of your comment, I only now understood that I um. Yeah. Nah, hold on. I, I still need to do other stuff. Uh, before I go back, so I will not be watching on chat or anything. Um, okay, I'm gonna try my best. Okay, shout if you need help, okay? Okay, we'll do so. Of tail. I, I'd rather replace everyone uh, by myself um, instead of doing it. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. This is very cool. But wait. Do I, does that mean that I think I will have to involve pops here? S something is missing. Something is missing. Um, pop where? Cause, uh, cause we are. Ah, no, ne never. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, th take into account that after you refactor, the code is will be only correct for the case of two, which was the original one. We still need to do more refactor to make it work for the case of, of 10, 11, or so on. Um, but for now, I, I just want you to make that work for the case of two, so it gives the same result. Okay, gonna try, but and, uh, make, make in my head at some point this row po uh, dot zero will lose validity. Yes, 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 it will. Yes, it will. But okay. uh, it's, it's important that we get into code that it works uh, using the new variables, mm -hmm. uh, because then uh, as we as we refactor it and completely destroy it, we need to check where we did the mistake. So it's good that we have a, a working version with this with this variant. But yeah. Okay. Well, good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, uh, when you're still here, can you post the actual 6332? Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to okay. do it. I mean, I'm here. I, I am on the computer. I'm on the computer. Just I'm in the other computer. Uh, 6332. 6332. That is what I need. Okay, that's all. One warning.
Oh shit. Rope.len minus one. Can't borrow as immutable because it is also borrowed as mutable. That is a bit complex. So, so um, you need to understand, find out w where is being borrowed as mutable. Uh, sorry, as immutable. So maybe do a cargo check and see in the console um, all the help details to understand where is being borrowed as, as immutable. Okay. The console is unfortunately a bit broken on my end. I only see the th uh, last three lines. Oh, crap. Yeah. Um, immutable borrow occurs here at line... Yes, but where does the mutable... The mutable the, borrow is here. The immutable... Yeah, mutable is that one. That one is clear. The other one. Uh, because the ones above work... Huh. Um, is all the code already uh, changed? This, this, this is the only part because if if this yes. is anything else, you can just keep doing, and I will go back to you. Yeah, this is the only thing that needs changing. Okay, so hang on for a few minutes, and I'll, I'll be back. Okay. Let's uh, rope plan. I'm back. I'm back. Welcome. Um, that's a good idea. Go for it. That's a good idea. He doesn't like it though. Type. Um, of wait. Uh, if you are doing the LAN, it's just oh, the it's inner side. Uh, oh, that works. That works. Okay. Oh, but now it complains above. Uh, yeah, just we just move it at the beginning and uh, do that. The same thing. Okay, that that is. The rope len doesn't get pushed, so that's okay, right? It will always stay the same. So far, yes, uh, we will check that later on when we change it. Uh, there is one erroring out here. I'll do that. Uh, yes. 
Now we can try to run it. I think that is... Oh! Invalid situation, distance of three. <laughs> That's not good. Mm -mm. That's not good. Okay, let, let me think. Let me think something. Um, maybe, maybe it's easier to do it right on the uh, on the first try. So process move needs to do all ten moves. Okay. Um, so that is something like. Um, for tail head in self rope uh, windows two yes but the problem is that the problem is that windows is is read only I need mutable access. Uh, crap, 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 crap. Um, um, wait a second. Uh, trust back get into the documentation. Um, Windows, what is Windows again? Uh, it creates, um, so it takes the first item and the second item, and then the second and the third. Um, Yeah, there is there is no window. Because I remember I mod. I used it in a thing, and someone was like, "Ah, is that really what you want to use?" And we were like, "Yeah, yeah, this is what we need here." Yeah, because one common approach is using chunks, which mm -hmm. basically the, uh, splits in in blocks of X, like one and two in one block, next block three and four. And Windows does one and two, and then two and three, so they, they overlap. Ah, yes. Windows and overlaps. the overlapping is what we wanted because, because, because of I think it was the rucksack challenge where we wanted the overlapping. Was it day four? Could be. Yes, yes, yes. Something like that was yes. Crap. The problem is that I need we need mutable access to both at the same time. And uh, the problem is that as soon as we get mutable access, we get mutable access to just one item. And we cannot borrow rope mutable twice for two items. And um, Get mute gets gives me just one. No, actually, wait, no, 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 no. I'm totally wrong. I'm totally wrong. We need read access to one, mutable to the other. I mean, this is suboptimal. This is suboptimal, but. Is all are, are all elements of copy? Are they copy? Can can I leverage this? Pause is copy. Pause is copy. So 
So also th there is there is a trick. Ah, oh, okay. So here is where Ross is getting in our way with the borrow checker. This is something that in C++ will not happen because you know what you're doing. Compiler trusts you and uh, you do that and it works. There is no problem on doing this in memory. But here Rust cannot validate what I'm doing. Uh, is what you are doing unsafe? No, or, no, is it safe but Rust can recognize it? It is safe but Rust cannot prove it. That is safe. So it wants you to go to unsafe if that's what you want to do. Um, yeah, or make some work around, which is what I'm thinking. I'm not going to do unsafe. Uh, I'm going to try some different workarounds. There are different workarounds. So cool. there are two that I can think of right now. So workaround number one is um, is uh, uh, whoa. Um, read head position, then clone it so we don't borrow it. Uh, then uh, write, then borrow mutably a uh, tail. That is one position, that one possibility. The workaround. Number two is use cell of uh, post uh, to have uh, inner uh, ability, even though we uh, have read only access. So there is th those tricks like. So there is uh, RCT, there is ref cell T, and so on that allow to write without write access. Uh, but for types that are very simple, that are copy, cell does work. Cell is much simpler and it does work for inner mutability. That's one option. And the other one is to read the head position and then clone it. I think that one, the workaround number one seems simpler than the second one. I think I prefer cloning over meddling with something. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Workaround number one. Workaround S two, is that like giving yourself root access? No, no, no. Workaround two is this row becomes cell pos, and uh, then doesn't want to do that for, for some reason. Type annotations. Ah, uh, it doesn't know how to do a default of that. Ah, or wait, but maybe it's because I need no, I need to import. Um, I need to import that, uh, and then the the thing is that self rope zero has a get and a get mute and you can write to it just by reading it so you can have a, a so here for example in this one that is ampersand self i'm not supposed to be able to write right but they can mm -hmm. do self rope of zero and they can do uh no get me no uh is set and they can set a different position something like that and that, that whatever position we wanted um uh, get and that's is you see that it doesn't error out in the, in the line. That should not be possible to actually assign a value to something. Well, you're only ho uh, holding a read-only borrow. That should not be possible. Uh, assigning set rope one get um. Ah, 
where exactly are you assigning something with the set? Um, to the same value to the, to the head in this case because it's a zero. And set is what changes it? Yes. And that is normally not possible? No. No, that's part of the problem that you are having right now. That um, it's saying that you have a mutable borrow and a, and a read-only borrow all the times. And uh, it's no, non doable. So that's that's what it does. Um, but cell only works properly with copy types. If it is not copy, it's not going to work with cell. Um, there are other types that are like cell, like ref cell, that work with any with everything. But they are harder to use. But that that is the cell one. That's what it does. Let's let's go with the uh, with the cloning method. So, same as before, let's do process move one link, one not. Process, process, not. Um, Wait a minute, I have a question. Yes. Uh, Vectors always get stored in the dynamic memory, and integers get always stored in the static memory, right? Uh, if it's only a vector or only an integer? Technically, no, but I guess that yes. I mean, finish, okay, do, I... Do, do, do the question, and now we'll see why not. Um, because probably your question is goes into misunderstanding the details. So ask ask the question. Uh, where does a tuple that contains an integer and a string go? So a tuple like this. So we do x equals um, string to own, so full string, and I don't know, 32? Yes. Okay. Where it goes? Yes. So, the tuple is in the heap. Okay. The whole tuple is in the heap. But the contents, but the contents of the string are in the... Um, sorry, the, the, top, the whole tuple is in the stack, not in the heap, it's in the stack. Stack, okay. stack, okay. Stack is what I meant with static memory, I think. Yes. And the uh, and the text string, string text, it goes to the uh, to the heap. So the heap is the dynamic thing. Yes. Okay. So that's because a string is is in the remember that article that I told you to, to read? That's where I explained it a bit. Oh shit, I totally forgot that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, a string basically contains very basic implementation contains an um, length uh, u32 and then a pointer uh, pointer to uh, um, string data um, which is uh, pointer to um, not, not, not as a vector, but as an array. Uh, pointer to uh, char. Which I don't remember the the um, the type. I mean, is okay. So basically, this struct is what is is what is held into the uh, into the stack. So the, what is stored along with the with the tuple? So the, the tuple is just two values. So it has the string and has the uh, i thirty two. Okay. So basically, you have you you are storing in memory four bytes plus eight bytes for the memory address plus four bytes. That that is the amount of memory. So total you have is 16 bytes for the tuple. That is stored into into the stack. But then this data pointer, okay, 
Mm -hmm. uh, that can be considered that could be uh, similar to box something 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 okay basically sends that data into the heap so that points to a memory address where is that uh, text contained in that memory address So yeah, in your stack, you're only holding the pointer, the borrow, as you may say, no, the borrow or the memory, pointer memory address, and that's it, which only takes eight bytes, regardless of the size. So that means that means that uh, a string that is quote quote that is empty takes uh, eight plus four takes twelve bytes at least, and is empty, and a string that contains something takes 12 bytes on stack plus the length of the string in heap more or less more or less i call that good enough so all, all this becomes more important when you're using C and C++ because you're managing the memory. You need to know how this works because if not, you, you, uh, in a lot of places you can start screwing up. But in Rust, you see that you can work with a lot of stuff without knowing what goes to heap, what goes to stack, uh, what is a memory address. Like I would generally aim to make my C++ code as close to Rust as possible. Yes, please. Yes. So, if we process a move, first we move the head. This is becoming complicated. You know what I am annoyed by, though? No. Um, if, if I want to make um, a C++ variable immutable, I have to put extra effort into it. Um, in C++, I will need to review this uh, in C, plain C at least in C++ 2 so you have an int you have a const int that yeah. can be changed and then you have uh, pointer to int const int pointer which means uh, you can so what, what is constant Constant is the pointer address. So actually, the 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 the, the, val the variable itself. So you need to understand that that this just eight bytes, uh, sorry, containing a memory address. Okay, so it's just a number. So then, when you put const on top of that, what you are protecting. Is the, is the same as with the regular int, you are protecting now those 8 bytes that contain the memory address. So you cannot change where it, you cannot change. This is very confusing, yeah? um, even for me. is You cannot change where it points to. Uh, but then exists something that, I, if I recall correctly, I think is in int star I think it is uh, destination value is constant and uh, const in const star goes <laughs> where it points and uh, the value is constant and you know the problem <laughs> I don't recall the syntax uh, that might be wrong so the, the thing does definitely exist it was something like that but I don't recall the syntax uh, I think it was something like this but I don't recall it right now it's too many years since I used that but you can specify if what you want to be const is either the pointer address or the value where it's pointing to or both 
uh, you can define it and uh, the compiler will check. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I, I don't recall. Uh, that, you, you can use that to make things more immutable. People use that in libraries. Yeah. As I said, the road to C++ is something that's going to be long and slow, but there is a lot to be learned. I mean, it's like 40 years of doing stuff that they, you need to learn. Because the, the language has been uh, changing and adding stuff for 40 years straight. I guess um, I'll focus on learning Rust, and when I need something in C++, I'll learn it just in time. That makes sense. Because, like, how how much further than the x do I want to go? Okay, oh, uh, no, not much. Basic problems, and that's it, because... The X tech uses very very simplistic algorithm, which is very simplistic C code. So, if you manage to do day seven in C you are more than prepared to handle the X techs uh, for whatever you want to change, because you are not going to change any file that's doing any kind of emulation. You are going to change files that do maybe logic, like the parts that were coded the original in Visual Basic. That's the part that you're going to touch that has the actual game logic and things like that, or how assets are loaded and things like that. And that shouldn't be um, more complex than what you are going to do in your attempt at day seven. It should be even simpler. It should be even simpler. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so we moved ahead. Um, we can uh, just clone now the uh, the rope so we already have it in a separate position in memory so let's just do let um, rope no, um, let uh, something something uh, um, I'd like to have dinner now or soonish. Um, what do you think? Um, yeah, um, I want, I think I, I can be here meanwhile, uh, doing the first part of the refactor or something. I, I can't, I can't stop whenever I think that. It might be back interesting to you because right now I will be for a while. I mean, you, you can do as far as you can get and that what is interesting to me, you can explain to me. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, then I will be AFK now eating dinner and they will be back in 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, that's fast. Okay. Yeah, just, just gonna eat, have, uh, just gonna have some cereals. Okay, that sounds good. See ya. See you. I'm Profit. So, oh, I forgot the camera. Camera. Something, something is something, something. Uh, self rope dot clone. What do we call that? It's, I mean, it, it, it is something. It is something, but I don't want to call it rope. Uh,. Cloned rope. Okay. Now. We need to take its tail possible and uh, borrow it mutably and get as well the corresponding head from cloned rope. So, for 
or something in... I still don't know what I need, need to code. Um, I mean... Uh, be an iter mat. We uh, skip the first one. Skip one. Enumerate it. And now... N and tail. And then... Head, because then N is offset by one. Head is just... Clone rope... N. That should be correct. Should be. Then... Uh, we call tail dot uh, process not. We're going to move it over there. Respective to head, because we don't care about the direction anymore. And that should update tail. Then we pick this function. Ah, but move tail is respective to head. Um going to follow the instinct of this should be uh, here in this implementation so at self that doesn't go here anymore and now this is Self distance to head. It's looking better. Self move tail head. Uh, that is read only. 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 Why you don't like that? Ah. Yeah, maybe not not the best. Meh. Let's place it like that. Distance to. Well, it is copy. It is copy, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It is copy. Okay. No, oh, it's self. Uh, no, sorry, this is head and this is tail. Itself. Is it the insert that needs to be moved outside? Uh, references here. Um, here. 
Insert. Oh, no, 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 no. It's the last one. It is the last one. It's the last one. The only one that we put. So tail here is self rope last. Last, not last month. Last. Uh, on the num da da da. Uh, on wrap and uh, start. Yes. Okay. This is tail, so it's self. I don't need that. Head. Self. This is which is self and this is tail this is tail this is tail okay so tail seems, seems simple to refactor if I do it correctly the right time, yeah, at the same time. Which is sad, because I don't want to refactor so aggressively. It doesn't tell me much other options. So, this is head. This is head. self rob rob land plus delta. Plus equals delta. This is tail. Does that work? Probably not. Um, uh, this is self. Self. And now what is this error? Cannot be applied to an unpresent mat boss. Uh, yes. Other sign. Sun mud boss. Uh, cargo, please. No, not there. That's because we are depending on this one. No, 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 no. Wait. Types cannot be different, said. Let's do it manually. 
self x uh, plus equals uh, right hand side x I want to find the compiler more because I mean this code uh, is a little too much I would like something generic be applied for everything I cannot borrow self as mutable uh, that is another mute I was hoping some help here, but uh, uh, start self. Yes. Okay. Still, I have errors. Uh, I need to remove one warning here that is bothering me. Um, yes, that doesn't make any sense. Thanks to Russ for that. Yes, I correctly moved all of that. Six three three two. That was the previous one as well. Which is Correct, I guess. Uh, part two sample data. Uh, cannot read the file. Oh, sorry. TXT. Twenty six. Now thirty six. Wait, this really 10 or something? Why? What? It should be 11? Okay, something is wrong. So I managed to do the case for uh, 2. 2 is correct. This one is not. Just need the previous head. Okay. Because then the new tail, that's the problem. The new tail is becomes the new head. And I need to carry that. So let mute head. Yeah. Uh, self rope first. Unwrap. I'm back. Hello. What did uh, I miss? A huge transformation of the code, like a butterfly, oh, no. like a butterfly that it goes out of the cocoon and then it's beautiful. <laughs> something, okay. something like that. Now, after uh, transformation, the code looks beautiful. I don't know how I got here, like the, just like the butterfly. The butterfly doesn't realize how she got there, into that form. So it just here. sometimes happens. Exactly. Sometimes it happens. So we have one of those nice accidents. Yes, you can see the referencing the borrow. What? Yes. Tail. Ah, we clone it here. Uh, copy. Copy it there. Okay, now I don't need this, so even more beautiful. Okay, okay, and I'll explain in a second. Um, 
o cómo se llama. 31. From 36. I'm something wrong, still wrong. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm off by one, even one part, or I still have some error. With 10 is 36. Okay, I thought it should be 11. Maybe you need to read carefully. Oh no no, it is 10. It is 10. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking into the description, uh, to the problem description, and I misread it. So it's 10 items counting the head. Okay, okay. So then, then I, I did it correctly. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. This one is difficult. The second part. Wow. Well, up to now, the second part have been easy. This one, uh, it just broke my mind. Okay. Wow. Few seconds, by the way. Few seconds. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is done. Okay. So what I did, what I did. Looks like a lot, but not that much. Um, so are you following me? At the moment, uh, I should be, but double check, double check. We are following in the. It seems that I am actually not following. Follow participants, huh? How did that happen? Okay. I never unfollowed consciously. Okay, no, no. Maybe it unfollows if you do something. I don't know. That would be lame. I don't know. So, what I did is. Again, split the problem in uh, smaller parts because the code we had before for process move, okay, it applies specifically when uh, we are doing, wait, here. When we are, you see here the, the diagrams, when um, we are moving, the, the old code of head and tail applies Uh, for any given pair. So like, first we move the head, maybe to the to the left, okay? Like, mm -hmm. say that we do this, okay? And then this is the head, and now this one becomes the quote-unquote new tail, okay? Then you apply the algorithm, the algorithm between those two, understanding that this is the head, and the one is the tail, and then following the algorithm, this moves here. And now you repeat from one as the head and two as the tail, and you repeat. And then uh, two and three, you repeat. Three and four, you repeat. Okay. And now four and five, they don't move because it's a uh, one. Yeah. And the others don't move either. So that's That's the thing, right? So the old algorithm works for that. That's the cool thing. So uh, I call that all that code a process knot. Okay, because it's saying that it was made of knots, so that's one knot. I had to call to call it something. And then thinking about it, this is something that is per its position possible, right? So for its tail or head, so for its element. So for each element of the rope, so each element of the rope, you need to call that. And then I thought, maybe that function belongs to this element instead of here. And it will be clearer. So because the less permissions, the less access I have, the simpler the code looks. Because I don't have so many things around. It forces me, it forces me to organize. So I tried to move it there. So I tried to move it there. Okay, and then uh, basically um, within that self, so our own current position is the tail, which is the one that we are changing mutably, and the other is the head that we have reference to. Then I adapted the code. It's the same code. You see that the distance is the distance to head, and then depending on the distance, we move the tail or not, or panic and so on. Okay, so this is the same code that we had before. It just has been moved here. And now move tail, same story, has been moved here. Okay. Self X and so on is the same. So just the self is tail. 
bit of mind bending there, but self tail. And uh, that's it. And this automatically updates the tail already. So with that code that looks like the old code, to be fair, very similar. Uh, now here, we only care, uh, care about that we need to process all the combinations of head and tail. So, we grab the, the head, okay, and I copy it, this is the star, copy the contents into head. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now the first tail is the second item. So, I iterate through, skipping the first item, because that one is the head. Okay. Ah, and this code here above is the same as, as the old code that you had. Basically, first we move the head, so we pick the first one and increase it by the movement. And that's the end of the story for this variable move. We don't need it anymore. So, now that, the, that the, the head has been moved, I can copy the value. Okay. Okay. And uh, now we are iterating, but it's an iter mute because we want a mutable reference every time. So this is going to iterate through the loop, skipping the first one, giving me uh, mutable references. Okay. And now this one, sorry, this one does not collide in borrows with this one because this one we copied it. We no longer hold the reference. It does have the copy trait, right? Yes. Good. Yes, it has the copy trait. If not, we will have done here dot clone. Uh, but yeah, that's the copy trait. Uh, so now, th because this is just a regular value that is owned, it doesn't conflict with the mutable here. So we can take the mutable of the each tail one at a time, and then we use this mutable to call the function, and then the function just uses always one as mutable, one as an as immutable, one as just borrowed, and uh, does this for each of those, and as we update, the new head becomes the old tail. So as we finish processing the tail, this now becomes the head of the next tail. Until we finish. Technically, the last head that we place here is the last item that we could just put here. And that should be the same. Should give me 36 as well. Bingo bango. Okay, um, tricks, the uh, self-visited.insert, it was inside of the process not. It has to be, because now visited is not inside of the position, I cannot access it, I needed to change it outside, but not, not, not only that, is that if it was inside, it was going to be called for each combination or each tail possible. And uh, the problem specifies that you want to record the position of the last one, not the intermediate items on the chain. So that's why it's at the, at the last part only. You get the idea? Um, not quite. I, um, I have a very difficult time so, following now. Yeah, no, it's hard for me as well, this thing. Uh, this, this is difficult. So, when it says, the problem, when it says here, uh, let me scroll down, scroll down. This is the one that you've been afraid of, right? Yeah, this one seemed complex. And the, sec the second part, the first part was already hard. We need to admit that. Uh, but this second part is mind-blowing. Do you think you are going to take it up to 25? I can try on my own. Once you say enough, you, we can, I can try it alone up to the 25. Uh, I should be able to resolve them, no problem. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, things we, we need to admit that those, the, the problems already are getting very difficult. Um, day 25, I don't know. I might need several streams myself to finish it, mm -hmm. but I'm fine with that. I can try to do them and try to finish all of them, and uh, we uh, all uh, will learn something. Um, so, here it says, how many positions does the tail of the rope visit at least once? And by the tail of the rope, it, ref it refers the tail, the nine. So it means that 
por the rope, por this rope, or, or, or this rope here, okay? Uh, this is the head, and the nine is the last tail, tail at the end. So the positions that this nine takes is the positions that we want to record, okay? So if I placed that thing inside of the loop, we will be recording the positions of all of them. And that's not we what the problem need. wants. Yeah, but it's not that we don't need, it's that the problem is not what it wants. So if we put that, we will compute a different number and the problem will be wrong. That's why it needs to be outside of the loop just to do the last nine every si and in every single move. I mean, uh, the code is nice. The, pro the problem is hard. Problem is hard. Mm. I'm still trying to understand the problem myself. Because I, I made it, but my, my head is still a bit dizzy from what I just did. Because it turns out that it's easier in Rust, not, not in Python or JavaScript. In Python or JavaScript will be maybe easier to refactor as I want to, you to do refactor just a bit. That is still in, incorrect for the whole case, but for the two, for the case of two, it is still valid. And then uh, step, step it up one by one. But in Rust, the intermediate step doesn't make sense from the memory standpoint. And uh, it's just simpler to just solve the whole thing at once. Because there are not many possibilities or steps that you can take. So also because we have the, the borrow checker. Because we have the borrow checker that is checking for us that it makes sense, at least from the memory standpoint. There are lots of code that it's valid code for C++, it's valid code for JavaScript, valid code for Python, that will be, will be incorrect in the result, that directly doesn't compile in Rust. Because of that, uh, we can just go ahead, like very, very, being very brave and say, I want to do it all at once, and just do it. Because you have the compiler to, to back you up and tell you this is wrong, this is correct, and so on. And because it's forcing you to organize your code. So that's one of the things that, that I noticed that it forces me to organize the code better, to make sense of what I'm writing. And because of that, the code looks better. And um, I cannot write a mess than that I cannot understand myself later on. So it's less scary. It's less scary to do the world refactor here in Rust. If I did that in Python, yes, I could refactor everything at one go, but then I will not know where it was the error, where I messed up. The problem will just execute, give some answer, whatever, and the answer will be just wrong. And then good luck finding the problem. I only catch two problems myself. That I had. So I catch a problem. The last, the last one was that the, uh, I understood eleven segments, and this is ten. This is the last one. The other problem was ah yes that that I was placing here instead of that I was doing uh, head equals. Uh, cloned uh, rope of N. So I was doing a full copy before, I was doing a full copy, and I was grabbing the head from the copy. And I was not taking into account that when tail changes, that is the next head that now is updated. And because I cloned the old data, as the four progressed, my data was becoming stale. So those were the two bugs that I had in my code. But it didn't take much for me to, to figure out where was the bug. I, I didn't need to debug anything at all. So just looking around, because it's very segmented in the small functions, it's like there is not much code that can go wrong. You, you know in which part you need, you need to look. And like, um, something is wrong and how is moving this thing. And I was looking into the here and reviewing the code as usual, like, Reading it and making sense that is what the text is saying. Like, if I translate this into text, my mind um, 
And then when I got here, it's like, oh, this had this this was wrong. And then I I updated and I'm like, yeah, that gives me a better answer, but I still had the other bug of the eleven segments instead of of ten. Where does it say in the example that you need thirty six? Uh, in the example, problem in the, uh, the in the in the description, I mean. Yes, line six six five. Not six six five. Yes, is there now the tail nine visits ah, yes. thirty six positions, including S at least once. Uh, yeah, let's try it. Crossing fingers for you. Two five one one. Two five one one. Two five one one. And right answer. Right answer. <laughs> Have you to see myself before I start cheering? GG! You are one gold star closer to collecting enough star fruits. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Wow. That's enough to get someone exhausted. Yeah. Are you still up to do something tomorrow? Yeah, yes, yes. I am happy to. Like for today, I'm going to read a bit the problem and I'm going to stop. Um, I mean, I could. I'm, I'm used to do this all day. So I, I could be continuing this until I uh, need to sleep. But I mean... For you, 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 you probably need some rest. Um, yeah. Uh, and also, 6 o'clock, Lucia wants to get outside. I want to get outside. I'm forced to be at home uh, up to 6 p.m. So, uh, on 6 p.m. straight, we want to be on the door. So, yeah, let's give it a read. But tomorrow, tomorrow, of course, fine. That's going to be fun. We can start also early in the morning as, as today. Um, I'm, th I'm thinking that I'd like today to take a longer break. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Up to you, up to you. For me, it will be fine because I mean, I'm stuck at home anyway. So, and this is fun. I, I believe you that it is. Um, I feel I was less of a help today than I was last time. And um, I definitely want to do day 10 still, but that may actually be my last. That may actually be my last. So... Um, I don't know how eager you are to continue. Um, I I could do the 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 wall thing. I could do the wall thing. Um, but yeah, the, the, there is a, the other thing. So, um, are you opposed to do them out of order? No, not particularly. I mean, it can be done in any order. Doesn't doesn't matter. Like, like it is. Because like if you'd be up to wait with day ten, um, I, I'd watch you do day eleven tomorrow. Ah, okay, okay. That sounds good. That sounds good. I can do day eleven. Day eleven. Oh, this one is hard. Oh, this one is hard. Okay, tomorrow we're go we're going to have to have fun, and. Uh, yeah, for, for this problem, I mean... I will watch um, and, and won't join with voice, but I'll oh, be in the chat. Okay, okay. This one, this one is going to be... Oh my god, oh my god. Monkey. Yeah, yeah, but what, what it worries me is that this is kind of a... Uh, how to say it? Uh, it's almost a, la a programming language. Oh shit, really? Yes, because it's defining operations. It's asking me to test the stuff that, that it changes randomly. Uh, if true, if false. Oof. Yes, so... This is Fuck, that may actually be something... Ah, uh, that may actually be... Like, cause like, y you know one thing that I imagined myself doing in the future? No, tell me, tell me. Is to make 
a game in BVI and that allows scripting for that game to allow custom NPCs and stuff. Um, you can plug a lot of languages, of scripting languages into Rust. So, like, please don't create your own language. Oh, no, de definitely not, definitely not, but... Um, yeah, th th this advice, more than to you, is to anyone that is hitting me, please don't create your own programming languages unless, unless, no, don't, don't, don't. Because I mean, you don't know how many people is creating their own programming languages. A lot, a lot. Anyway, go on. So, you want to make it scriptable? Yes, that's what I imagine doing in the because the, the XTech will also be scriptable. It will uh, use Lua for that. Uh -huh. And a game that I imagine myself doing in Bvi sometime, I'd like to add Lua there too. And I don't know, could this day 11 be helpful for that or not? No. Okay, then never mind. Then never mind. Then I'm not interested. Then I won't do it. Because I definitely don't want to ever create my own programming, programming language. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I already agreed with your advice and I, I will take it. Um, I will acknowledge your re-emphasizing that this is even worse of, a, of an idea than I thought it to be, which I already thought to be a bad idea. Um, so yeah, the 11, I, I won't do it. I won't do it. So, okay, good that that said it. Yeah, I mean, if someone wants to practice this exercise, it's very nice, but like, don't take it to next level and from here create your own programming language or your own interpreter of expressions. There are libraries for this. I mean, if Rust is missing a library to do things like math and so on, uh, maybe, but uh, no. Ah, yeah. So, good, 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 good. So, um, a very common one that is used um, for... Uh, uh, plugging into a set of Lua. I never used Lua myself. I used it once for a game that had Lua as a scripting language. But V8 is a good option. Also I for think it will use Lua JIT. Yeah, Lua, 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 Lua JIT. Yes, that's just Lua. Lua with uh, just in time compiler. Oh, wait, maybe... V what? <laughs> JavaScript engine? Yeah, v V8 is the JavaScript engine of Chrome or Chromium. It's open source and is blazing fast with all the powers of JavaScript, with m very, very modern JavaScript. And uh, it's made in a way that it can be integrated with programs very, uh, very well. Uh, but V8 is well integrated with C++. So for Rust, I don't know if this is a good idea. For Rust, maybe there are better languages. But in C++, this integrates like crazy. I, I did some integration for testing in C++. And this is, it's, it's just crazy. And, and it's super fast, super, super fast. Uh, and very powerful. This is the same thing that, that powers uh, Node.js. I don't know if you heard about Node.js. I had heard of it, but I have no idea what it is. So Node.js is JavaScript uh, for the server side or um, to make TypeScript work. You remember TypeScript? Uh, mm -hmm. So they use Node.js for this, which basically is a, is a server that runs JavaScript. And this runs V8. Um, so yeah, it's it's very it's very popular uh, the V8, V8 engine. But yeah, uh, Lua for Rust. I don't know. Maybe there is integration for bindings with Lua. That's something for future all need to figure out though. Mm -hmm. It's for Amethyst. I remember. This was a different... Well, this was something like Bevy, I think? I don't remember. High level bindings. High level means that this is efficient, right? It means that it, it, it's human. That it's 
easy to understand that you don't need to go down to the C level API that is speaks basically machine code almost. Uh, that is easy to understand. But those are bindings, which um, doesn't mean that it's fast or slow, it means that it's direct. You don't have you, you, you don't you don't have uh, any kind of performance penalty. Should it shouldn't have performance penalty. That is nice. That is extremely nice. Lua, I'm not sure what how fast is Lua. I don't think Lua is one of the fastest languages. Uh, yes, I heard that that Lua and JavaScript are like the top contenders for fastest scripting language. Ah, uh, it is. Oh, that's what I heard. Oh, uh, can I compare it with? Let's compare it with Rust to see. A difference. Uh, can I see? Uh, haha, where it is? It doesn't tell me. Okay. Uh, well, this is Rust. Time out. Just I see. Three times is lower. Same. Can't compare. Ten times is lower. Three to four times is lower. Three times is lower. That's a that's a very good score. That that is a very very good score. Three times three to so like anything that is five times is lower than Rust or C plus plus. For a scripting language that is super fast that is super super fast for a scripting language so java is probably should be the fastest uh, non poorly compiled code that uses bytecode and so on uh, and uh, java was in some of the implementations was roughly four times as lower as, as c++ for the majority of the problems some parts faster, some parts slower, well, faster, like faster than four times. Uh, um, so yeah, four, four times slower for interpreted language. It is very fast. It is very fast. Good to know. Good to know. Definitely, and the amount of memory used. Huh. The prime sieve. It's faster in Lua. <laughs> prime thief? What is that? Uh, this is basically computing primes, I think. Okay. So, being faster, it means that... So, because this... Those comparisons, doesn't matter how you do them, they are never fair. They are never fair. Because given a, a, an infinite amount of time and experience to write... A code to do something, uh, you can make your code almost infinitely faster. Uh, but the problem is, the problem is, in real life, when you code normally, uh, regular code, how will be, how will will compare regular code? So, in this case, it looks like um, it is easier to get a Lua program. I'm looking into the Lua program. To do, to do the prime sieve, this, yeah, it looks proud. It, 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 it looks quite simple to read. I don't I don't read Lua, but looks okay. And uh, the fastest Rust code, it uh, it has a sync. I mean, it's not overly complicated, but it's not trivial either. It's not trivial either. It's like the Lua code looks simpler and it's faster. So, of course, of course, you could get the Rust code and spend hours on it to make it super ultra mega fast. And uh, probably it should be faster than Lua if you spend the time. But the point is that 
this Rust code is something that I can see myself writing. I can write this code myself. I don't see anything that I, I didn't write before and uh, there is nothing too much. And, this is, and it gets us lower. So basically Lua is understanding better the task and this bit is capable of optimizing it better. So this is a challenge between uh, compilers and optimizers. So how the compiler is able to optimize the code. So the Lua one for this particular case is able to understand better and create better, better uh, um, machine code for it than the Rust one can. So yeah, cool, 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 cool. So yeah, great, great choice, great choice. So uh, I will need to learn Lua properly at some point. So, Ooh, interesting. Man, that is fast. I definitely will have to learn it because, of that course, I want to make fast. the XTEC scripts. Lua one. Yeah. Coroutine create and, and automates the parallelism for you as well. Huh. Does the site also nice. tell you how Lua nice. compares nice. to Java? Can you hear me? Oh, sorry. I cannot hear you. One second. My bad. Wait, you cannot hear give, me. Give me one sec. I just lost audio. Will I recover audio automatically or? Uh, I'm speaking clear? now. Can you? Uh, you? You can be heard on a stream, but I cannot hear you. Oh, I see. Huh. Now, did I recover the audio? <sighs> I think that's a no. I reset the sound card. I know, I know, I know you are speaking and, and you probably you can be here on stream. Come on, come on. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, let's do something. Um, I'm going to close the stream because we are about to close and I need to fix the audio here. So yeah, let's let's close for now. I'll close the call as well.